Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Nathan Wozniak, founder CEO of Ubiquity. Can you all hear me? Just type yes, <laughs> if you can hear me. Hopefully you can. Uh, we have a bunch of people coming on here right now. Let's see, can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Okay. So uh, thanks, everyone, um, for tuning in to the Ubiquity 2021 fourth quarter end of year webinar. Um, as, I, as I mentioned before, my name is Nathan Wozniak. I'm the founder and CEO of Ubiquity LLC. Uh, we're the leading enterprise blockchain company for real estate title and escrow, one block at a time. Uh, so you can find our website at ubiquity.io and the event website. So if you want to go back there, look at the bios, um, you know, get a kind of a, a brief synopsis, uh, as well as look at the schedule, you can go to ubiquity.net. Uh, so Ubiquity was founded six years ago. On September 15th, 2015, um, we're registered in Wilmington, Delaware. We have staff and advisory board and partners located worldwide. Um, you know, we're pioneers in blockchain technology and, and title. Uh, we have experienced professionals with a proven track record and a clear focus on clients' needs. So our focus is on, um, you know, medium enterprise size uh, title companies, escrow companies, county recorders, um, as well as land records offices uh, globally. Uh, we're B2B and we're striving to be B2G all the time. Uh, we are not B2C. Uh, so what do we offer? Uh, we offer our main main solution uh, is uh, an API and, and uh, blockchain as a service platform called Unanimity. Uh, it allows a client to put his or her data and store it onto the blockchain. And it also allows an accurate audit of records. Uh, so it's um, effectively, it allows... Um, you know, the, the user to uh, authenticate information related to ownership, ownership history, and transfer of records. Um, so the primary use case of the platform has been the title industry, but it's also been successfully applied to other industries as well. Uh, you can learn more by reading our use case material on our website. It's, uh, if I remember correctly, ubiquity.io slash use and then hyphen cases. Um, use cases were um, that we describe have uh, been considered and already are used widely across our company. So also be sure to read our customer case studies as well. And I'll send a link for everybody who wants to uh, read about that. Um, so obviously, well, Ubiquity isn't the only company in the market that offers blockchain recordation uh, for real estate records. We are the most successful because we've done things the right way. You know, we're partnered with title companies as a source of truth. Uh, we've been including county recording offices as stakeholders in our conversations. Um, big shout out to Utah for being really forward thinking uh, globally in that area. Um, we're also mindful of proper legal structures and uh, used you know, for properly tokenizing title. So in short, we're always striving to do things the right way. So a brief summary of the title industry. Um, it's a $16.4 billion industry as of 2020. Um, hopefully we get some new stats on this for next year. Um, the uh, title industry in the U.S. market growth in 2020 was 1.3%. And uh, the title in, um, industry for U.S. analyzed market size from the last, uh, from 2015 to 2020 was 2.7%. So what is Ubiquity working on? You know, it's been a while. We didn't have a Q3 webinar. We've been quite busy, but we did have a Q, Q2 webinar. And since then, we've actually pivoted and shifted away from some of our focus, like block extract for instance. So um, besides unanimity, um, which plugs obviously into the title and escrow systems, we've launched, uh, we're launching smart escrow in Q1 of this year, or, excuse me, this upcoming year, 2022, uh, a product that uh, our chief revenue officer, Darcy Van Orden, will be actually speaking about in a, in a couple minutes here. So it allows uh, companies to conduct uh, property settlements utilizing cryptocurrency stable coins. Uh, she'll go into that. I mean, I, I could give you the big quote here, but I'm running out of time here. So I'll just skip to this and say, look, if you want to learn about more about it, just go to smartescrow.us. Um, it is in response to a market demand, and really it's the true cryptocurrency real estate settlements. Uh, so we have we've been talking with title insurance underwriters, title companies, uh, as well as banks, crypto banks, and others. And we are supporting, and a big shout out to our infrastructure partners, since 2020, uh, Proton Chain, and so that allow Proton Chain allows us to support Paxos, Paxos Gold, True USD, USD Tether. Yes, I know, and USDC. <laughs> so a disclaimer, real quick. Please remember this event is being recorded, so please keep it professional at all times. We can have fun though. Um, 
Ubiquity staff may mention how fundraising um, is, is happening at our company, and that'll probably be me. So not an offer to sell securities. Uh, everything contained in this uh, this webinar is not an offer to buy securities, nor there shall be any securities in any jurisdiction which would uh, violate uh, regulatory laws. So you can learn more um, on our website, securities offer disclaimer. And uh, it's ubiquity.io slash securities underscore offering discla underscore disclaimer on our investment page for accredited investors only. So the views expressed in this webinar are not necessarily those by Ubiquity. Um, each speaker has 15 minutes with a five minute Q&A. Our style is informal, relaxed, conversational. And um, real quick, I'm running out of time here, so sorry about that. Thanks to our sponsors, Just Learn Crypto, the Crypto Realty Group, Height Zero Real Estate and Consulting, Mount X Real Estate Capital, Mount Pellerin, and Inisu. In addition, thank you to our partners at DoorDash. We'll be giving away some gift cards to random attendees. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our first speaker of the evening. That's Darcy Van Orden. She's our Chief Revenue Officer for Ubiquity and one of our earliest investors and largest investor. So um, Darcy Van Orden grew up in the D.C. area, um, lives in Utah. Uh, she started working in competing cr uh, currencies, assisting to pass Utah's Legal Tender Act in 2011, where they monetized gold and silver as currency. Uh, Darcy started working in the crypto space back in 2014. In 2015, uh, she proposed a bill to the Utah legislature to allow citizens to pay their taxes in Bitcoin. She's currently the Chief Revenue Officer of Ubiquity, pioneers in uh, blockchain and real estate industries, and... Um, she also is the CEO of DVO Consulting, development shop which specializes in big data, cybersecurity projects supporting federal agencies, DHS and DOD. You can learn more at dvoconsult.com. So without further ado, we have uh, Darcy Van Orden. We'll bring you on the video here. One moment, please. Okay, inviting. It looks like, wow, a lot of people showing up. Hello. Welcome. Do you hear me? Yeah. All right, excellent. Hey, thanks. Thank you, Nathan. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, to have you all join us. So I hope everybody had a Merry Christmas and uh, wishing you all a Happy New Year. So uh, we're pretty amped at all the exciting things happening uh, with Ubiquity. And obviously, we're anticipating 2022 to be our biggest year yet. Um, as Nathan mentioned, I am an early investor with Ubiquity. I did come in at around 2017. And um, over that time, it's just been um, an amazing ride and journey. And I'm super excited uh, now to be the Chief Revenue Officer. Um, when I first got started, I've just seen so much happen in this space. Um, just a little background on how I made the, the kind of the um, transfer from just in straight crypto into more of the blockchain focus. Uh, for myself, as I started going to Bitcoin meetups in the early days of 2014, for me, I got super interested in the crypto. And then for me, it also became a question of, wow, I'm so fascinated by blockchain. You know, How can we make um, blockchain applicable to our daily lives? And so for myself in 2017, I decided I'm gonna make this vision board. And it's funny because I, it, I grabbed it earlier today and took a look at it. Um, I made a vision board of five areas I wanted to make an impact in in blockchain. And where where in my thought process, the way I like to explain blockchain versus just the focus in crypto is I kind of explain it as the difference of marijuana and industrial hemp. I feel like marijuana is very controversial and everybody focuses on it as a drug uh, versus the, there is over 30,000 industrial uses it, usages for hemp and including making the toughest plastics, hardest concrete, you know, clothes, material, um, paper, everything uh, and, and biofuels and everything else. And so I, I see blockchain very much like our industrial hemp. We have all these applications in, in the world um, that we need to apply to our daily lives. And that's what I sought to do uh, with blockchain. And so on my vision board, I created... I wanted to first and foremost record title, uh, second, tokenizing real estate, uh, third, voting on the blockchain, fourth, 
um, electronic me medical records, and the fifth area is supply chain. And I'm excited to report that you, when I found Ubiquity, I started doing the research and focusing on title first. I found Ubiquity online. It's like, you can't beat them, join them. So I reached out through the info page. Um, I didn't hear back in 24 hours. I was anxious. Reached out to a friend. I said, hey, do you have the CEO's contact? And he gave me Nathan's email, sent the email out, and the rest is kind of history there. Um, but it's super exciting space. Um, I'm, I'm excited to report I've worked on four out of those five areas. Um, I am also an advisor to Ballot Tech, which is for voting on the blockchain. And then I've, I've actually consulted on an electronic me medical records project. So for me, I see the opportunity with blockchain is endless. What I love about our products like Unanimity, I mean, you could do so much more with this, with this platform beyond recording title. I mean, you can record any document out there. So I just want to put that out as a plug. If you have, you have listeners on here who are thinking, well, beyond title, other documentation, there's so many applications to it. So feel free to reach out and we can answer more of your questions and figure out a solution uh, for your particular use case. Absolutely. I'll jump in real quick and say as a side chain, haha, it was our first use case of unanimity was actually aviation title. So, you know, we were up in the sky before we were on the ground Absolutely. for real estate. So. And what's funny is somebody inquired the other day, they were like, you know, they were trying to understand what they could do with unanimity and understand some of our other platforms. And they mentioned something about, you know, equipment in space. And I said, hey, you know, we could do the same with unanimity, you know, so yeah. um, just like we've done with aviation. So, so many opportunities here. Keep that in mind as you're talking with other people about platforms they're looking into, you know. As, as far as it comes to recording any kind of asset documentation, that's something unanimity can do. Yeah. Um, yeah. So getting on to, I know we have lots of questions and we'll, if people wanna chime in, they feel free to. Um, but I think our, our hot product, of course, our flagship product, which has made all of the you know waves this year, which is Smart Escrow. And we are so excited. Uh, we're anticipating its official uh, launch here in Q1 of 2022. So just around the corner, uh, we're working hard to get this all done, obviously working with our title company partners to making sure this is the solution that's going to solve all of their problems uh, moving forward. But just if you're not familiar with Smart Escrow, as Nathan mentioned, of course, visit smartescrow.us. And we have an explainer video, which I think is very handy, has great visualizations. But that will, that's going to kind of help you get a good visual and understanding of what this product is going to do. But the long and short of it is, is that it is a platform that allows you to, to do an end-to-end -end crypto transaction um, for real estate. So currently on the market in the United States and even in the world, there is not currently a platform that exists that allows for an end-to-end -end crypto transaction. May I show the video if I do a quick two minute? Oh, of course. Go okay. For it. All That's right. Great. Let me uh, do this here. Okay. So Please. I've been practicing here. <laughs> um, on how to do this properly because it's a different platform than most people are used to, right? Yes. Um, okay. All right. Can everyone see the screen? Like you probably see like blue. Yes. Okay. Let me do full screen and uh, we'll go from here. Cryptocurrency has gone mainstream. People around the world use it to pay for all kinds of products and services. And companies in a variety of industries now accept cryptocurrency. The U.S. real estate market, however, has been a bit slow to adapt. If someone wants to buy real estate using cryptocurrency, they would first have to convert it into U.S. dollars. Smart Escrow by Ubiquity is revolutionizing the U.S. real estate escrow sector, one block at a time. How? We're making it possible to buy real estate with cryptocurrency stablecoins by enabling escrow companies to collect and disperse funds and settle transactions, all with cryptocurrency. Working with a network of title and escrow companies, their insurance underwriters and banks, we've perfected a system that makes all parties feel secure. Title and escrow companies don't want volatile cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum. So first, we help buyers convert their cryptocurrencies into a stablecoin. Then, we send that stablecoin into a smart escrow wallet, which then can be integrated into an escrow or title company's title and closing software. 
Once the transaction is complete, the title or escrow company disperses funds into various parties as a stablecoin, at which point these counterparties can convert their stablecoins either into dollars or another cryptocurrency of their choice. With smart escrow, it's a new era in real property escrow settlements. To learn more about buying U.S. real estate or enabling real estate transactions using cryptocurrency with ubiquity, visit smartescrow.us. Perfect. So hopefully he was able to see that. I think I think the secret sauce here is very much the fact that people always ask, well, what do we do when Bitcoin you know, is going up and going down through this process? The key here is that we are taking it in any cryptocurrency. It's being transferred into a stable coin and then it's going to remain in that stable coin until we're about to the, the closing of this property. The, the money is then transferred out. Uh, from from the buyer to the from the from the buyer to the seller, and at that point, it is received, you know, transferred once again into that stable coin, and then that person has the opportunity to choose: Do I want to have this transferred into a different crypto out of that stable coin into a new cryptocurrency of my choice, Bitcoin, Ethereum, any of them, or do I want it transferred into U.S. dollars? And so they have that opportunity of their choice. And so yeah. this is incredible in the market. I've had so many people as I've traveled around speaking in conferences saying, and real estate agents saying, hey, I have this conundrum. You know, the buyer, you know, they they want it completely in crypto. The seller wants it completely in crypto. I mean, so we have these discussions all the time. Nothing like that, like this exists. There is absolute demand for it. We actually had a homie reach out to us, which is a local app that's, um, that that lists a lot of properties and they mentioned they reached out and said hey we've got somebody who a seller who wants their home purchased in dogecoin and so yeah so we told them hey as soon as this, as soon as our platform is complete we can handle that transaction for you and so that's what's really exciting is we're seeing this demand of course from buyers and sellers and then the demand is greatly coming from you know our title companies want to differentiate themselves mm -hmm. from other companies in the marketplace you have of course banks even top 20 us banks reaching out and saying we need this product right we don't want to have to go through uh, having our tech team develop something customized for us they can integrate with us and we solve that problem for them and now they yep. can have access to these crypto buyers and sellers which is going to make all the difference for them um you know, moving forward, everybody wants to be on the cutting end of technology. And Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. And, and I, so some people were complaining there was an echo, but yeah, because I think because both of us are both of us had our microphones on. But um, yeah, you can just watch the video. You can go to smartescrow.us. The video is linked. Um, I, I also uh, supplied the link as well. It's, you know, under two minutes. So. Yeah. so we are super excited. Now, just to put it a point out there of making um, smart escrow is is focused on the United States real estate market as well as U.S. territories. So we're also excited to see that we can get this platform launched in territories like Puerto Rico as well. Um, but yeah, and Guam. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Which in U.S. Virgin Islands, so a lot of great places that will have an opportunity with this platform. But we didn't want to leave it there because as I've traveled around and listened to a lot of people and friends who've told me about wanting to purchase properties in Mexico and other you know, resort style places, I've said, I thought, you know, this is important that we have a platform available that can be worked on at the, at the international level, as well as something that can be utilized if they don't need an end to end crypto transaction. And there we have the invent of ubiquity pay. So I'm working, I'm working on this product um, to allow to receive in crypto, and then it exits into the fiat currency of your choice. So as I mentioned, it, it, it is international as well. So this will allow you to exit into pesos, um, you know, or, or ruby, rubles or any, any other um, fiat currency um, as needed around the world. It will also still be utilized in the United States as well because for example, we have a lot of escrow companies out in California who just say, hey, we, just, we don't need the end-to-end -end transaction. We just need to be able to receive in crypto and exit into fiat. And so that is why we have Ubiquity Pay. Also, uh, we're planning on its launch and availability in Q1 as well. So super exciting news on the product front. Uh, so much more to come on that. Um, I know we have a little bit of information on the website and that, but when things are officially launched for that platform, you will all be notified as well. So yeah. 
And what? it's worth mentioning, like, you know, we're not trying to become like, uh, you know, a, a level one uh, payment processor, anything like that. So we're partnered with a payment processor and we're just working on the details right now for that. Yeah. yeah so we're super excited because mm -hmm. that is, <clears throat> and I have, we have crypto companies ready to process. I've had agents reach out to me. I even was on a call today of their saying, hey, we need this product, like, immediately so we're yeah. hoping um to have that all prepared to complete a transaction here by the end of january so that's what's super exciting for that and um like i said we have a large pipeline of people ready to utilize that product uh, which are did you want to say something oh yeah um well i guess the, the good segue to the emissary program and and some of the folks so we um you know you can mention uh piper uh obviously piper's uh, colleague uh, susie he'll be up next trex uh she's helping to run the crypto realty group and then of course um laura hamatian so yeah. when I'm, perhaps yeah. yeah so they are awesome advisors who are assisting with the launch of the emissary program which i'm working on so what we're excited to launch and that'll once again it's going to come here in q1 a lot going on um is our emissary program is where we're basically creating that bridge to real estate agents and brokers so as they refer in crypto to crypto real estate transactions they can benefit financially for doing so. Um, and so we're still working out all of the details and putting together, you know, all of all of the collateral in writing for that, um, you know, training, putting that process together, um, you know, making making the demos available so they become very familiar with these products and understand them. Um, you know, working on, you know, the FAQ to answer those questions and just helping them better understand the benefits of these tools, kind of basic talking points for, you know, speaking to somebody who might potentially have a crypto transaction, because obviously for a lot of these agents, you know, the crypto world is new to them. So we want to empower them with the talking points they need to utilize our platform successfully. And we're excited because we will also be making available to them um, as another option as well, the unanimity product to recording title to the blockchain on these transactions, which I think that makes a lot of these transactions very special um, for these agents to be able to offer their clients. Absolutely. And it's, you know, worth mentioning that unanimity, it's tried, test and true. It's been running for almost three years and we tested it, you know, across a number of industries. Yes. So, yeah. so that covers, I would say the main products that I wanted to uh, cover today. Mm -hmm. um, what other questions can I answer for you guys? I think that's a lot of information. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if anyone has questions for us. We have uh, quite a lot of people live actually right now, which is pretty good. Yeah, almost 20 people. It's excellent. Uh, hey, Wes is on. Hey, Wes. <laughs> Hello. We have two minutes. So, if, yeah, if you have, if, uh, we have two minutes here before um, we have our next speaker up. So, if anyone has questions in terms of, um, you know, our products, what we're launching, um, if you can't think of anything right now, of course, you can email Darcy at ubiquity.io. Um, you know, you can CC Nathan. Uh, fees, well, so we do have a fee st structure in place. Um, this is an, an, under an NDA, but it'll be basically uh, SAS, you know, standard SAS fees for smart escrow. Um, and then, you know, standard, very competitive, uh, you know, rates in terms of the actual transaction. So obviously there's other companies that are sort of doing what we're doing, not completely, kind of halfway we won't mention that company, uh, but we're competitive in that area, and we certainly will be competitive uh, with them and um, standard SaaS fees as well for access. Uh, in terms of unanimity, it's basically per record fees. It really depends on the size and uh, you know the use case as well. So, but uh, we have one minute. And I, I, we'll uh, get uh, our next speaker up live here in a sec. But um, yeah, we'll go from here. I guess. Uh, Perhaps you could stay on. Uh, we'd like to stay on, or would you like me to take you off video for now? Yeah, you can take me off video. That's fine. okay. Cool. All right. Uh, great, great job. And um, we'll uh, maybe we'll have you on here with uh, Andrew and I. You can say a few things as well because it's kind of like I'm going to give like a high level, thirty thousand feet in the air um, overview of the year, and then I'll give like ten minutes so you and I can probably go back and forth, and then we'll have Andrew uh, Zankla. Uh, Sounds great. You know, share some time. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, uh, up next, we have our next speaker, who's uh, Susie Truex, and I'll just read. So uh, her speech is, uh, what's the state of the real estate market? She's filling in for Piper Moretti. 
an advisor to uh, Ubiquity. And I will just read her profile here. Give me one sec. Loading. So uh, Susie Trucks is the director of growth, uh, world leading uh, blockchain expert. Um, Susie and her team represent the pinnacle of modern real estate professionals. Uh, tech and data native, uh, crypto fluent and customer centric. Susie has assembled a team of high uh, um, global high achievers to provide her clientele with world class expertise and guidance in every aspect of the complex real estate landscape. An insatiable learner, uh, Susie's uh, CV boasts uh, 20 plus years of diverse award winning real estate acumen, um, secured number one spot in listing and overall sales volumes, purchasing and managing an extensive income property portfolio to discrete representation of high net worth and celebrity clients. And Susie has attained mastery of the craft. Additionally, Susie has launched and managed several metropolitan real estate franchises. Uh, she's with the Crypto Realty Group, and I will bring her on right now. Okay. Hi, Justin. All right. So Susie is up now and uh, give her the floor. Accepted and connecting. Give us one sec here. It's always something with technology. <laughs> okay, it says accepting and connecting. Uh, Susie, what we'll probably have you do is try logging out and logging back in, and we'll uh, give it a try again. Thank you. <laughs> no, Susie's not shy. <laughs> I can promise you that. Okay, let's give this another try here. The Crowdcast app, yep. Yeah. I guess there is a Crowdcast app. Is that like a mobile app or something? Okay, we're just inviting her over once again. So accepting and connecting. How are we oh, doing? Here Yay. we go. Beautiful. Thanks. Hello. Hey, everybody. Well, that's Chrome for you. Sometimes Safari is better, and this is one of those times. <laughs> Chrome, Chrome was trying to control everything. So sorry about that, everybody. Well, nothing like waiting forever. So hi, I'm Susie um, Piper. Moretti and I are uh, you know, teammates on Crypto Realty Group and that all sounded really great what you read about me, Nathan. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> You're welcome. Just, just, just a little bit of background beyond my, you know, uh, two, two bytes of information out there in the world for my, you know, real estate profile. I have been in the crypto space since 2014. And just like Darcy going to, you know, meetups, I, I, my son debates me on this, but I'm pretty sure that I met... Um, the uh, Vitalik at a meetup in San Francisco. I'm based in the Silicon Valley right now. And so, um, you know, this part of the talk, talking about real estate and the state of the market in the real world is fun, but talking about real estate and the state of the market in the metaverse is way more fun. But so for right now, and we'll talk about what's happening in the real world. And I'm sure, I'm sure everybody knows this time of year, 
uh, since mostly everybody on here is in the uh, somehow tangentially related to the real estate space. It's, you know, it's the holidays and we have seasonality. So inventory is naturally low at this time of year. However, um, you know, coming off of uh, a lot of the shutdown, 2021 was a little bit crazy, as everyone knows, all that pent up demand, all the houses that didn't get bought and sold in 2020. It seemed like we were going to have a little bit of a, a rebalancing, but uh, after, after that demand got eaten up, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Um, uh, demand for single homes is still through the roof. Even this week, multi-offer situation still in certain locations in the country. I myself was trying to buy a property in Charleston, South Carolina two weeks ago, mm -hmm. and uh, you got to move that day, basically. So uh, some, some places, uh, like for example, I like to talk about the Bay Area because I feel like it's a leader in what happens in the rest of the country. And I know that ever since the whole pandemic, uh, the great pause, as I heard it called today. Uh, <laughs> That's yeah, a good one. Yeah, yeah. I, I wish I could take it. It's not my, um, it's not my term, but it's. I like the way they described it. Um, the condo market has suffered, where, uh, and you know, in places where there's a large tech um, economy, and the tech companies are not requiring those people to come back into the office anytime soon, or they're, you know, still extending the remote work. I really see the condo market still sort of, um, even, even I just looked at some quick prices in the Bay area and I've, I, I find it hard to believe, and if there's any investors out there, you can get a condo in San Francisco for half a million dollars, which mm -hmm. four years ago was on un, unheard of three years ago was unheard of. So, um, that's, I, What's what's the projection for 2022? I think as long as interest rates stay the way they're they're hovering, but they're going to you know stay low on the mortgage side. Um, and I know that we're talking about talking about um, you know inflation being a problem and the Fed potentially raising rates, but I just don't see that happening in a knee jerk way. So my prediction for 2022 is that we're going to continue with this um high demand and low inventory situation builders just can't build fast enough and so prices will remain strong uh you know still seeing it in the bay area multiple offer situation cash all that um crypto, <laughs> crypto exactly yep. so that's that was sort of my my next I wanted to talk about the boring real estate market, the real real estate market, and and then go on to crypt the crypto space. Uh, it's it's even though we've you know crypto prices have fallen from their recent highs, we're still three times higher than we were at the end of 2020. So uh, there's a lot of wealth floating around out there, a lot of people wanting to stabilize their crypto asset and not necessarily do the cash out thing, which is, you know, as as probably everyone knows on here, that's a tax implication that I personally don't, you know, don't want to encounter. And so what you just described in your smart escrow product, where everything can happen in it within your platform that's amazing and so um and let me think what else have i say three times since the end of 2020 any questions in there for any anyone that's amazing by the way it's just it's incredible uh, well I, I would say what would you what would you say that the best thing you can do to uh fight inflation to you know stay above obviously I, purchase property I, <laughs> purchase property and hedge with cryptocurrency. If yeah, there you go. <laughs> I like a good strong hedge a... with cryptocurrency. Thanks for the lead in, Nathan. Thank You're you. welcome. It's a softball. Um, but yeah, so and, and so on cryptocurrency and real estate, what I love to talk about with people in our industry is, you know, our uh, real estate is one of the last industries to be disrupted. It's it's I always think of it as like the Titanic when seeing the iceberg. We just can't move fast enough to avoid hitting the iceberg. And so there's not a lot of disruption per se happening in real estate, but I feel like we are at the 1992 internet 
as it stands with cryptocurrency, blockchain, and real estate. And right now, everything's storming. We don't know. And ubiqu ubiquity will will likely come out on top with being, you know, first first to market with a real solution. Um, but it's exciting because four five years ago, even recently as two or three years ago, me talking to other real estate agents about cryptocurrency and the real estate in, in the same sentence, there was no connection in their mind. And now um, Piper and I have built uh, an international network of crypto fluent real estate agents. And we're actually teaching real estate agents how to just what you said. And then within your platform, the, the talking points on how to talk to sellers and how to talk to buyers about uh, buyers and sellers who want to use cryptocurrency in the transaction. And so it's a, uh, it's an enormous wide open field and the appetite now, despite our uh, previous reputation as the Titanic or the old timers, the agents themselves, the appetite is there for this information. And so together with industry stakeholders, such as the title companies and the mortgage companies, the agents them and the consumers are now going to be also part of driving the conversation around how we do business in this way. So I'm excited about that aspect. Yeah. And it's great because we're seeing I mean, years ago when I spoke at the National Association of Realtors, NAR, I think we were, I was in the first, you know, don't quote me on this, but I think it was one of the first blockchain panels ever at NAR in uh, Chicago in 2017. And we didn't even touch the idea of crypto. Uh, we were talking to realtors, brokers, um, and we just talked about the, the parallel recording side of things. Uh, one gentleman who is the deputy recorder of deeds for Cook County started going into smart contracts and I, I think he, he probably lost them a little bit. Exactly. So things have definitely changed in the last few years, you know, three or four years, big time. Ab absolutely. It was so, um, I think the problem, and even when I was introduced to cryptocurrency in 2014, you know, it had that nefarious, you know, silk road, this is drug money, assassination money. It had that whole sort of culture around it, dark web, yeah. And now, I mean, obviously with Goldman and every other, uh, you know, Wall Street company in it, Tesla in it, yeah. ent entire nations turning to it for their currency, it's no longer doesn't have that nefarious reputation. And so here we are mainstream. How yeah. do we make this thing work? And so every kudos and applause to everyone on this webinar, because you, you're leading the way. And there's a wave of people behind you who want to learn from you what we're talking about today. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. Yeah. And so the other thing that I wanted to talk about, two, two other things that are just really exciting about the state of the market. Uh, I, I'll never forget this phone call I had a year ago with one of my colleagues. Uh, Piper and I also participate on something called the Crypto Real Estate Alliance. And it's really about decentralization of real estate. And with one of my colleagues on that alliance, we were talking about NFTs. And this is October of 2020. And, and I was having trouble wrapping my head around the concept of what an NFT was. We were specifically talking about the art space. Um, and now here we are, NFTing real estate, which I'm, I'm sure everybody on this called non-fungible token and basically you know, trading things without having to have the physical asset in your hand. Um, and we can have more questions about that. Yeah. My, my excitement is, and I've, and I also have agents from all over the world reaching out to me about NFT and real estate, which is just in its, you know, it's burgeoning at this point in time. Yeah. And it's, it's a little scary in the U S especially because you know, the regular regulators in this crypto space aren't necessarily creating regulation. They're more waiting to see who's going to stick their neck out and they might chop it off and set precedent that way. And so, uh, you know, I don't know if that's of interest to anyone here, but that's exciting to me, especially from if we ever get to the fractionalization part of it, if we can ever, you know, tokenize a property in, in a significant way. They're doing it in other countries, yeah. but 
who wants to be first and not the leading edge, but the bleeding edge here in the US with that uh, NFT in real estate. So that's super exciting. So I imagine we'll be having a different conversation this time next year. Oh, totally. And I'll, I'll say as a side note to that, um, you know, we we put this off and that's another goal of ours for Q1 is um, I got my NFTs.org and we are hoping to do title policies, blockchain title policies with NFTs. Um, wow. par yeah, partnered with uh, Real Items. It's a company um, out of the U.S. as well. And so uh, Wes, who is on the call here with us, is an advisor. He's been you know, with us for a while. He has uh, quite a lot of ideas concerning that too. So we do have a, a partner, um, a client in Washington State, uh, Rainier Title, and they've expressed some interest in that area as well. So Awesome. Awesome. And I see somebody put up one in the chat, another yeah. company that I've not met but have heard of. And so that that's where I'm super excited. I, you know, uh, the idea to NFT something, you know, to, to pay $69 million for a JPEG doesn't truly, doesn't true. I don't see the value, but God bless the people that do. Um, I'm more interested in truly tradable assets, not so much the, you know, the, the hypey culture part of it. And so the, the liquidity, bringing liquidity to real estate is what really interests me. Um, and so that's my, that's my really exciting, that's super exciting. And then one other uh, state of the market thing that's super exciting and kind of crazy, but. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, the, the, the people on Twitter will say, well, it, it's, uh, it's tracked with IPFS and the data is stored on IPFS, interplanetary final system, and it's on the blockchain. And, I, you know, that's interesting stuff. And the, the art community is is cool. The collectors, I think, get a lot of uh, clout these days. Um, but there are a lot of independent artists that are supporting each other. And I think it's a good first use case yeah. for sure. Uh, Eric Bryant, who's been in the space for quite a long time, works in the industry, uh, works with Fibery. As well, Fibery, an organization that I'm a member of, um, a real, um, I'm a regional chair. Excuse me, I, I was I read RC and I'm like, what does that stand for? All right, regional chair for Toronto. Uh, uh -huh. So he mentioned uh, Fabricland, cool stuff around NFTs yeah. and real estate, and uh, par 300 parcels NFTs. And Carson mentioned, uh, uh, yeah, the NFT aspect of the real estate use case, in my opinion, is the most valuable aspect. Very good to hear the side of the combo. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. Yeah, then add that with yeah. multiverses, which uh, is another <laughs> conversation. And that, and that's where I think, you know, to us, to the practitioners, not the collectors or the people who are riding, you know, riding the wave of the fad part of it. I really do believe that the NFT, especially the fractionalization, can can really be a game changer in the real estate industry, and especially for. Um, owners, you know, and, and also I feel like it gives access. If we can get past the whole accredited investor thing and it's a security kind of thing. And that's really where it is. I have right now, I've been uh, contacted by several people that have large projects that they want to fractionalize NFT. And one of, one of the people, if I name the name, everyone in this room, knows who this person is it's an internationally famous person and i counseled them and said let us not be first we don't want to necessarily be first it could be it could be amazing or it could be you know going down in flames so yeah. let's let's let somebody else stick their neck out on that fractionalized um use case first so so sure. um yeah yeah we don't we don't want the press from that because i think about there was, you know, there was an NFT that was attempted before the one that happened in the Ukraine or whatever last year. Someone attempted to NFT a U.S. property and it failed. So, you know, mm. nobody crashing and burning on a big project, not a good way to go. So that's that's super exciting. So I can't wait to see what the next few months bring within that. And then my um, I mean, the blockchain applications for real estate are just you know, especially on the commercial side, just seems yeah. like an endless, endless array of potentiality there. And wait, you know, we could have a whole week's worth of webinars just on that subject. I think about, you know, totally. I think about rent collection and not from the mom and pop standpoint, I'm talking about, you know, the big companies, the big apartment companies, what they could do with the blockchain is enormous. And so, um, 
But the last kind of, you know, crazy new thing stayed in the market. And am I, if I'm out of time, please just, you know. No, um, in fact, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll buy you some time here because I'll be just on a rambling thing here, just talking about, you know, the back uh, ubiquities sort of high level of what we've done. But um, we'll, I'll give you the time you need. I'll give you another five minutes if you'd like. Oh, no. I just wanted to talk about, and I'm excited to talk with everybody about this, you know, craziness. Um, how? So I, I accidentally bought Decentraland about eight months ago or mana people know that cryptocurrency and the reason yeah. and the reason that i bought it was my um my advisor in in cryptocurrency investing told me hey you know now's a good time for you to just check a few coins out besides the major ones and read you know read what they're about and buy them well i had just read in the last couple of years ready player one ready player two and mm -hmm. I was like, well, this one sounds fun. This sounds like something that could conceivably happen. And here we are. Um, you know, yeah. Mark Zuckerberg, not the inventor of the word metaverse, by the way. Um, it's true. For, if anyone in the crowd wants to know, there's a book called Snow Crash. Um, I'm, I'm failing to remember the author. William name Gibson, I think. Let me see. It's on my Kindle. I'm reading this right oh, now. Oh, Neil Stevenson. Neil Stevenson. That's it. Yeah, Stevenson. I read that book. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And so I recommend everybody in this, even if you read the first chapter, this person talk about prescient. He it's 1992 and he describes GPS and he describes the metaverse there mm -hmm. as we as we know it today. And so and to connect that back to my purchase of mana was just really, you know, I can envision a world where people are owning i had tried the oculus goggles on and played a game one time i won't do that again because i'll disappear into the metaverse i'll never come back out again <laughs> um it's true but i could conceive of a world where people would want to own things and buy things and then you know we see what happens with people buying real estate in the metaverse and actually just um in november piper and i gave a talk at a big real estate convention. And one of the agents in the audience said, hey, should we set up a real estate company in the metaverse? <laughs> talk about precognition because this was before that land had been purchased. And so, oh, that's um, cool. yeah, yeah. So here we are. Is there a need for real estate agents and title companies in the metaverse? What do I know? We're still storming. I have no idea. Yeah, we're so, still trying to get our blockchain minds around, like minds around blockchain technology and... I think it'll happen. Um, you're talking to a person who is completely negative about it. Uh, ask Wes Williams, who's on here. Yeah. I was completely negative about it. I was like, ah, no, no, no. And uh, and then Facebook renames their company Meta. And then there's just this huge storm. And so if there's one of those moments of, I haha, I told you so. Yeah. Yeah, I was wrong <laughs> on that one. <laughs> but so. Um, exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah, so those that's sort of the state of the market from you know from a regular real world real estate to you know will will I dip my toe into buying real estate in the metaverse? Hmm, I'm not sure. Probably I probably won't, but will I continue to invest in companies who are doing innovative things in there? Definitely. That's awesome. Uh, I still like I still like to be able, my investing criteria. I have to be able to live in it if I can't get a renter, and so you know. Yeah. That's a good, um, that's actually, that's really good. Um, a couple quick, quick comments here. Uh, it looks like, uh, so Joe, AKA J Clark, I'm sure metaverse has been around, uh, about as long as the word metaphysical. Yeah. Or cyberspace. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then Carson hate to price Susie. Are your concerns with fractionalized route, the implications it might produce from a tokenized securities perspective or a non-regulatory dimension interested to, uh, in your own reasons? Or yes. Specifically around regulatory, specifically, um, yeah. you know, I know, I know that the Jobs Act sort of opened um, opened up some leeway into non non accredited investors, but yeah, I I think I think that this is so new. Equity crowdfunding and stuff, yeah, yes, yeah, and so and so I'm a little I'm a little nervous for any of my clients to be the first one. I'd rather you know. The, the the fee the legal fees for making a mistake in this space can be very very expensive and I personally yeah. because I have red hair I look terrible in orange so anytime we're talking about <laughs> securities issues 
you know, I sat on the board of uh, EXP World Holdings for three years. And so I always said, I'm not going to say or do anything wrong because I look terrible in orange. And I feel like this is the same, you know, we're in that same gray area and nothing has been laid out. I feel like the regulators are just waiting for waiting for someone to make a mis what they perceive to be a mistake. And then that's how we learn what the law will be instead of just setting regulations up ahead of time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I'm always critical of the, the 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 people who are hyper risk averse, but you got to be a little bit averse to depending on what you're trying to accomplish. I don't so that's why you know we always brag. I, we never did ICOs. I got to avoid that whole pitfall, and you know we yeah. always brag about that. But I don't want to make a mistake sometime down the line, not having the the foresight or just just like I don't know pragmatic but mindset in terms Some, of what could happen so sometimes sometimes first mover is not an advantage as we know so you you know kind of break the seal for others to learn from your blood the bloodbath and i don't yeah. you know i'm i'm waiting to see someone else try and actually there is someone trying to do just a standard nft in the us right now and that's interesting um yeah and even in that case it has to be llc to llc so it's not like to the people on this call understand a land record change in a person to person name or in multiple people. And I don't know, it's still, right. this is still getting born. Yeah. Quick claim fraud is such a, I'm on the, 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 the list on Google for those keywords and the kinds of things people try is just crazy. So Wes did mention one thing. So Wes is an attorney. I'm sure he's not giving legal advice and I'm going to say right. he's not, but he says there are no uh, novel ways to structure these in a way that may not violate securities laws. And then Eric, uh, Coach Bryant, um, yeah, maybe you can read that out loud. I, I have yeah. to have a drink of my tea here. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. The conceptually. Yeah. You want me to read that? I'll read it. Sure, Concep yeah, go ahead. Conceptually, you can create a trust with you as the trustee and, the benef and beneficiary. That trust can be the owner of a parcel and can be converted to an NFT. Now you may not own the parcel, but you do control it. You can store the parcel's title policy and provenance within that NFT. You yeah. then do not sell the property, but can sell the NFT and the position within it as trustee and beneficiary. It's an interesting approach, something to be watched, right? Yeah. And I and I think that's a lot of friction that it have to be. There'd have to be an extreme upside for me to have that friction. That's just where I'm at with with all of it. So again, let somebody else put their neck out, and we'll figure it out. Because beautiful. It's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, what I'll do is I'll bring on Andrew Zankel, uh, and he can introduce himself, but he's uh, president of Core Title Services. And I'll bring on uh, Darcy Van Orden as well. So thank you so much, Susie. That was really insightful, uh, brilliantly articulated, and really, uh, really exciting. It'll be fun. Thank you. Nice awesome. to see everybody. Yeah, you thank too. You Take Nathan. care. Bye-bye. Okay. Let's see here. And we will bring on... Darcy, where are you? <laughs> this is not alphabetically listed, so I have to scroll. Did Darcy leave us? She may have dropped off. That's okay. That is totally cool. Um, hey, Andrew. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. Thank you. Long time no talk. It's been a uh, couple hours. couple hours. <laughs> That's right. Excellent. Um, so, I mean, geez, I... I guess I've kind of given like a high level already of you know what Ubiquity has been up to. We we were uh, we were going to do uh, Blockstract, a peer to peer marketplace for you know for agents and title companies to bid on work from um, abstractors globally, and then we decided to take that uh, beast and shoot it behind the barn, proverbially speaking, and focus on smart escrow. So that's been a good uh, decision, I think, and I think that you commended that earlier. So. Um, I think I told you that uh, two or three years ago. Two years ago, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You did, you did. Um, but, you know, we're happy to be focused. And I, I know that there was a lot of, we had a lot of things on the go. And that's kind of the fun thing when you have a, a startup company and you're sort of first to the party for a couple of years. You get the chance to tinker and make, you know, kind of fun mistakes that are not going to be too costly. So that's, uh, you know, what we pivoted towards. And you've been supportive. Obviously, you're in the industry. And, uh well, how about this? Why don't you give like a background yourself for you know everyone else who's not familiar with you or maybe is new to you? Sure. Uh, probably most people are not familiar with me. Um, my name is Andrew Zankel. I was born in the title industry. Um, I'm third generation. My grandfather 
had one of the first title agencies in New York, going back from the 1950s and 60s uh, into the 70s in Queens, New York. Um, my father started his company around 1980 till 2000, 2008, uh, where we joined Fidelity. Um, I was part of the company then. We were Fidelity for, I'm sorry, for 2005. And we were there for eight years. Um, and in 2013, we left Fidelity and started a core title. Um, I had two partners there, uh, took a bunch of the uh, Fidelity staff that had the same vision as us and, you know, started this uh, agency. Um, so where, for instance, July 2013, uh, we do about a thousand transactions a year. This year, we about 1050, uh, about two and a half billion dollars worth of uh, insured transactions. So, uh, you know, pretty, pretty good, I think. Um, a lot of commercial in New York City. Queens, Brooklyn, um, uh, high-end residential, Long Island, and Westchester. So the whole New York, uh, you know, New York City area. Um, what else? I have a team of about 25 people. So a good mid-sized company, uh, boutique-oriented. Um, I'm on the uh, the New York State Land Title Association. I'm on the executive committee, um, and I am the chairman of the technology committee. So I basically task myself with try and find new technologies uh, and bring it to my industry in New York. Uh, the, I find in New York, especially the title industry is extremely old fashioned, maybe because of Wall Street and uh, you know the history of finance here. But most of my industry doesn't know anything about technology. Uh, it's just a fact. We're way behind the rest yeah. of the country. So I'm trying to introduce them to things such as blockchain and you know cybersecurity and automation and AI and whatever I can. So it's good. It's great. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm part of the Wall Street Blockchain Alliance. I'm on the real estate working group. Um, uh, I think I'm on Fibre. I'm not sure if I renewed my membership. I have to if I haven't. Um, and really just just uh, trying to push the industry along as best I can. And, uh, you know, this stuff really interests me. I, uh, I kind of caught the crypto and blockchain bug in 2017, just before the the big uh, blow up in uh, you know uh, end of the year 2017. Oh yeah, yeah, crypto winter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I heard of it a couple of times before that, but when it really you know became uh, mainstream in uh, around Christmas of 2017, that's when I really went down the rabbit hole uh, for Bitcoin and everything else. And then I saw all the uh, use cases for blockchain and real estate and title insurance. And I think right around that time, I saw Ubiquity and I reached out to Nathan. And uh, you even came out to my office in New York a couple of years ago. Yeah, and uh, yep, yeah, sure did. Uh, we have a lot of common interests in music and real estate and technology, yeah. so we've gone along well. And um, yeah, it's been a good couple of years, and I'm excited to see where you guys are heading. I think, thank you. Um, I think the land records aspect of blockchain is really intriguing. I think that we are really far away from that being a reality, um, yep. just because of uh, the county recorder offices and just uh, the legacy records is you know hundreds of millions of recordings that are not uh, uh, digitized yet. So I don't know how they're gonna get into the, you know, onto the blockchain, but um, I see going forward, there's definitely a possibility. Um, I think so, so. yeah. I, I think definitely with our partners at Proton, you know, I'm gonna definitely, you know, promote them. We are blockchain agnostic, but you know, they're a premium partner of ours and they do, uh, you know, zero fee transactions. And yeah, um, that's, well, that's a big one. It's more like, can their network handle us doing a lot of them at once? Uh, yeah, the, the big problem is just going to be finding those county clerks in uh, upstate New York that have a basement full of boxes of, of records that are covered in dust. And someone's got to digitize them, and that's that's what I see happening because I think there's what three thousand counties in the U.S. Yeah, so that's a lot of uh, documents to uh, to scan and digitize. So uh, going forward, it's not a problem, especially with all the e-recording happening. But I course, find the yeah. I find the legacy going back to deeds in you know, the eighties, nineties, seventies, whatever it is. Um, yeah, what I did find intriguing though film. is yeah. um, when Nathan told me about smart escrow. I see that as a, uh, I think that's a perfect starting place for title and real estate and and uh, and crypto. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of these, a lot of uh, people that hold cryptocurrencies uh, done pretty well over the last few years, and they're going to start diversifying into um, you know assets such as real estate. So I said to myself, how are they going to do this? And, you know, they're basically going to purchase with crypto or are you going to uh, borrow fiat against your crypto and then probably refinance, you know, with a traditional bank uh, down the line and repay your 
your crypto loan. So it's pretty complicated. I don't think there's any real um, products that have figured that out fully yet. So purchasing with crypto is the way to go. And um, I took the step of, uh, you know, going through everything with BitPay and getting set with them. I put out a press release a few months ago uh, to do that with my company in New York, discussing my underwriters and got the, the green light from them. And then uh, shortly after that, Nathan approached me with smart escrow. And I think that's really the, the best way to go about it. It's, it's, it's the most seamless way. And I'm really excited for the product. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's, I will give credit to Wes. Uh, you know, he yeah, was great a Wes. child. Amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I've helped uh, in terms of the technical side of things and kind of bringing those partnerships together. But it's yeah, definitely his baby. And, you know, we want to make it bring it to fruition and get that yeah. get that launched and uh, go from there. But yeah. it's, you know, West Wes definitely. You know that the 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 uh, stable coins aspect was a big part that was missing, and I think that yeah. you know when you think about it, it, makes so much sense. But Wes is the first person that really I think of that that really just said this is the way to do it, and I think it's, it's yep. genius. It's great. Absolutely. What well, was uh, totally? What was cool it was like I remember we were just biting my my banging my head against the wall with uh, with uh, Blockstract, and then Wes gave me the pitch with Smart Escrow. I was like, yep. Yeah. Dropping everything else. Yep. And Smart move. I think that's I think that's definitely the way. And then um, yep. you know, as as ubiquity, unanimity, and smart escrow gain traction, then you start, you know, bringing in the, the whole land records aspect. So yeah, exactly exactly, right? And and we know we've we've done the freedom of information requests, the FAOIs um on the competition and just even seeing what others are doing. And you know, we got a lot of insightful information from that that either the the recorders didn't understand it or didn't have the constituents to cover it or just didn't have the budget. Or generally, it was all the, all the above. Um, but that'll, that'll change, and especially with partners like Proton and other companies like VeChain, you know, and, and, and some of the other technologies we've been looking at, um, the costs are coming down for the record recordation, and it's yeah. really going to come down to can the network uh, handle it? We don't want another crypto kitty situation, and I certainly, you know, I have full faith in Proton Chain and VeChain and others. I just want to make sure if we're going to be doing that with county recorders and pounding through tons and tons of records that it's going to be uh, a lot. handle it. Yeah. yeah. Um, actually, it's worth mentioning because someone asked here, a couple people have asked about the DoorDash giveaway. So I'll just um, quickly do a screen share because there are some rules because we are partnered with DoorDash. I have to, I can't just say we're partnered and splash the logo on. Otherwise I'm in trouble here. So let me just uh, talking with their corporate team in New York. And they've given us permission to do just this. So um, this is our presentation. By the way, anyone who can, who wants a copy of this, you just have to subscribe on our website. So I'll skip through. We have a new mission statement. Um, but I'll get to the very end of it, which is, OK. All right, we'll be giving away four $50 DoorDash gift cards to lucky participants of our event. So, um, well, let's see here. Gary, you won. And uh, who else is the other winner? <laughs> let's see here. Um, I'm rolling dice. <laughs> Promise. Uh, Hanoi, Hanoi has won, so they both won fifty dollars gift cards. Uh, the other two I'll give away later on near the end of the, the event. So uh, contact me, you guys, uh, Hanoi and Gary. Just message me or email. Actually, email Nathan at ubiquity.io, and I'll have those mailed off. So I'm still waiting on the actual cards to be delivered from DoorDash because of the Christmas holidays and delays. But I promise you, I will deliver them. And if uh, anyone who's on here knows about ubiquity's giveaways. We always have delivered the crypto. So we'll deliver the, uh, the gift cards as well <laughs> on giveaways. So, uh, that's basically it. I don't know if you had any other uh, guys have had any questions yeah. for Andrew or, or I, you know, can I say a couple more things? I just want to oh, mention, please, of course, uh, I thought, course. I thought Susie's, um, uh, talk was great. I really, uh, I agree with almost everything she said. I think that, uh, you know, it's very insightful. Um, I am also a big believer in the metaverse and where it's going. Um, it, yep. It's pretty mind blowing when you think about what you can do there. You know, I, a couple months ago, I heard about 
you know, an Adidas store opening up in uh, Decentraland. You can go in a shop and then, you know, a couple of days later, a pair of kicks come to your door, you know, in the physical world. To me, that's, yeah. that's unbelievable. And it shows where uh, we're going with this whole thing. So I think it's pretty exciting. Um, and every day there's new projects coming out. I'm excited to hear from Dan about the Protonverse too. Oh, uh, yeah. I think he's absolutely. next. So that's, that's pretty exciting. He is next. Um, yep. As far as, um, you know, she was mentioning uh, real estate brokerages. Um, I know one called Parcels that's doing some pretty cool stuff. I think there's definitely a need for that. Uh, title insurance, I don't think it's going to happen in the metaverse. There's no need for it. I mean, you have uh, yeah. all the land is, is minted right there on the blockchain. You you can't encumber it with liens. Um, I'm not really sure why you would need title insurance. I did buy the uh, domain name Decentral Title about six months ago, just in case. But uh, nice. I don't uh, I don't think that uh, there's going to be a need for it. But I might be wrong. You never know. Yeah, you never know. You never know for sure. Well, hey, I'll, if I'll I say am, this. If I am, I have, the, I have the domain name. So You do? Yeah, I have a couple <laughs> uh, NFT domain names. So I'm like, well, if this my NFT thing fails, I'll just sell the domain for a lot of money. But I don't, I don't believe in failing. I believe in perseverance. And I mean, six years has shown that I'm uh, one of those people. Um, I will say one thing, though. I When I... I forgot, but it was the EIP 721 standard by Ethereum, the non fungible token standard, and Ubiquity was listed on there among other companies. I was like, okay, we got to do something now. I can't, this is from January 2018. It's wow, you know, almost four years ago. So I'm like, yeah, I got to do something with this, you know, yeah. NFT stuff. So um, any other questions for me? Well, you got me on the. On, oh, on this um, no, just, just, yeah, not myself. Oh, um, what about signing titles in person on the metaverse so sign titles how as far as sure integrating with e-recording uh not recording um like a run like a remote online notary platform is that i'm not sure if that's what joe means not sure. um you know you could do it in in person i mean conceptually this is the first i'm thinking about this but i'm sure you could do it in in metaverse closing you'd have to integrate with a um you know, a Notarize or Stavi or, or one of those uh, RON platforms. Yeah. Because you, you do have to yeah. notarize a, uh, a, you know, a deed so you can uh, have it recorded with the county clerk or on, on the blockchain eventually. It's, uh, yeah. you know, but that's definitely not, not a bad use case, especially with smart escrow and um, the way RON is going. I know New York just got approved last week. Yeah, for, I uh, tweeted that out exactly yeah, today. Yeah, so yeah. I think we're the 38th state. Uh, it'll be in effect the law in about a year. But uh, it's pretty exciting stuff. That's awesome. Absolutely. Well, things are changing Thank quickly. You. It's nice. To, yeah. Nice to see. Oh, so it's nice. Every every step helps. You know, getting every step. Future. Yeah, one block at a time. Yep. There you go. <laughs> Registered R. <laughs> well, cool. Well, thanks so much. Uh, I really appreciate it, Andrew. Um, really insightful and fun. And we'll have to have you on again. Yeah. No, I'd love to. Um, if you guys, anyone wants to reach out to me, um, um, I don't, Nathan, I don't know if you want to share my email. It's oh yeah, yeah. If you want to share it, you can type it up. I'll put in my, I'll put into the notes. Uh, yeah. So anyone has any questions from me about title or anything, just reach out. More than happy to help. Beautiful. All right. Well, th thanks so much. Um, Thank you. Uh, Yosin, so Yosin, if you want to get uh, the the public deck, just go to ubiquity.io and then just sign up. So we always try to collect email. We, you know, privacy policies. It's very strict. So just, just sign up at ubiquity.io and uh, you can get. Every month we'll put out a new version. We only email you once a month. We don't spam people or anything like that. So low volume. Cool. Right. Well, thanks, thanks so much, Andrew. You take care. Take care. Yeah. Bye bye. Alrighty, you're up, my friend. Hey, can you hear me? Okay. Sure can. Loud and clear. Hey, yeah. thanks for having me, uh, Nathan, no um, and Darcy, Andrew, and Susie. I could listen to you all day long. You know, really, this this should almost be a all day long conference. I don't know how long how much longer we have to go, but um about two hours <laughs> <laughs> it's really it's really a very deep subject um just yeah. a little bit a little bit about my background i dipped my toes into into crypto finally uh around 2016 uh when when everything was going hot and heavy and and it was just so everywhere and of course that was a signal that hey we're at the, we're probably going to be at the peak but we weren't at the peak probably for another oh six months seven months more so I got in, got in some, and got involved with some projects early on that that uh, got me excited, and I I, uh, I I got familiar with crypto and made some mistakes and so forth, like everybody does. Um, but I remember the bust and boom cycle of of the dot com era. You probably do too. And um, 
I think we're going through something similar now. Which companies are going to be around um, at 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 the at the bust? You know, with crypto, it seems we have a a boom and bust almost every day. But if you really zoom out, you see that that we have we have increased um, as far as yep. as far as Proton. Proton has gained so much more since when I got into it in, in 2020. So. Absolutely. And it's incredible. I mean, you know, uh, I've known uh, Marshall Hayner for a number of years. We've known each other in the crypto space since 2013 um, and just been buddies ever since and been a huge supporter of the Proton project. I always hate saying project, but I, I just, you know, Metallicus, a company that's established, that's uh, well capitalized and they're working on you know, metal metal pay and they have, they're like, you know, applying for a banking license in South Dakota as well. And it's uh, a charter, excuse me. It's just exciting. I mean, this is an established company and great people behind it. So, right after after a certain period of time, I got burned out because nobody was really doing anything about mass adoption. They were talking about it, but the projects yeah. that I could see around didn't really have that potential because everything was so new and and you know, yeah. and like like in the dot com era, there was some businesses that didn't make it. A lot of crypto isn't around now. That of course it was around 2015, 16, 17. So. But Proton Chain, I think, does have a lot of a lot of potential, um, and I'm also a block producer on on the chain, as you well know. But you have me here talking about Protonverse. Protonverse yeah. is is a is a family friendly metaverse on the Proton Chain. Uh, we've only just formed it. The board has just 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 gotten together just today again, and there's a lot of little things to do. We're a nonprofit organization, so we have a lot of um, a lot of details to tie up, and maybe we'll be that that lamb that has to take the chance that Susie was talking about um, with what we want to do in the metaverse and uh, with their, with a proton verse family friendly um, is, is a little bit different and, and kind of maybe steps us out of, of, of some of what other people are doing. So maybe we'll, we'll stand out in that way. I'm sure. Um, but our byline is kind of like to preserve the best of, of, of our humanity. Um, it's beautiful. Yeah, technology, te- technology has a dark side. It always has. That's why you have Snow Crash. That's why you have Ready Player uh, One and yeah. and all these other these tomes that have been written about these these dystopic sort of uh, themes for the times we're living in now. And as we all get our our VR glasses on, our Oculus on, and we and AI increases and becomes more advanced, maybe we will slip more into the virtual world than we are now, maybe in the, in the real world. So I would like to see that we sort of mirror the best of where we are there um, so we can preserve that. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you know, I've been using the Internet since 1994 and I was 12. <laughs> so do the math. I'm, I'm 40 now. I just turned 40 last month. And, I, you know, I remember secure socket layer was a new thing and people were doing credit card transactions back in 96 with 56 bit encryption that can be cracked now, like in a, in a second. And, you know, but there's always been like the existential risk. And then there's always been people who are working like the good people, good guys and gals uh, to try to offset the, you know, nefarious people that are online. Right. Um, I always give credit to folks like loft heavy industries, a gray hat hacker collective um, out of Boston who uh, really just, made Microsoft wake up and as a result of disclosures, you know, full disclosures and being responsible with disclosures and security, um, forced Microsoft to make Microsoft security division, you know, so there's good people out there that are always going to counterbalance the negative. Yeah. We're all trying to figure it out still, you know, the regulations and, and all this stuff. And like Susie was saying, they're just waiting for someone to, to put their arm or their head out there to get it chopped off. And who wants to be the first one to do that? Um, yeah. yeah, there's a tremendous opportunity, as you know, as we know, for for the metaverse and for for virtual lands and so forth. But what is it? What does it all really look like? And we were talking about IPFS earlier. And where do these NFTs really exist? You know, and who really owns them? And what happens if this chain goes down? And where does that NFT go? You know, mm-hmm. lots of lots needs to be explored and discovered. But we're we're planning on an entire network around around that sort of uh, happening, uh, backing up. And having having servers backing up servers, um, yeah. even from the back blockchain itself. Absolutely, and you take a look at. I mean, I've been following um, IPFS since 2015. Um, Juan Benet, I've been, you know, I've talked with him every rarely every couple of years, but following them ever since they were just talking about this. And they have Filecoin that came out, and then you have um, 
So you buy PFS, and then you have another network that's sort of built on top of it, uh, storage, st storage with a J, and they built technology on top of IPFS to kind of give it better uptime because that's an issue with, with um, IPFS is that the nodes keep going down, right? Uh, so that's an issue. But, you know, things are getting better, right? I think, think things are getting better with technology and over time and innovations and with demand, so. Yeah, yeah, it's it's still kind of early days, but we're we're kind of in the front of that crest of that wave now. I thought, well, mass adoption is somewhere here in the distance, but yeah. um, I'm seeing more and more, and it's more and more in the media every day. Cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency, and I mean the yeah. the trade magazines you never thought would ever almost never have these kind of articles they're having. They're telling you what you go buy. <laughs> Look out! <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, we might be at that boom. We're at the top of that cycle again. Maybe that. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. That's, that's like you said, happened. cycles are every day, right? It's like, because uh, I remember I remember the dot-com bust. Uh, I was too young. I think I was, I just turned 18. And then six months later, there was a big crash. And I was watching Nortel stock just go to nothing. And uh, all these other companies. Um, Enron. <laughs> that was a big one. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so. And now look at us. We, uh. Just yeah, like like you know, we had uh, like Andrew was mentioning, uh, you know, the uh, 2017 uh, crypto winter. Well, there's going to be crypto winters that are going to happen, right? I think they're just going to be less and less. Well, but the value doesn't go away. I mean, okay, maybe the valuation does, but the value is yeah. still there. It's there in the product. Yeah. It's there in your products. It's there in Proton Chain. Uh, yeah, other, other in Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, whatever the price is, the value is still there as long as it's a, a project that has a strong foundation. Um, it will survive. Yeah. It'll survive for yet another season. Um, eventually, I think we'll get we'll get above or we'll get to a point of of adoption and and reach and reach a point where we won't be affected so much. I think about these these dips. Exactly. Yeah, I don't really exactly. think much about the price. I think about what can we do with this technology, and for yeah. for us, that's why we've chosen Proton. Oh, exactly. And you know, we're all, you know, with with even with a lot of the the the. What am I saying with Proton? Just the giveaways, the the growth we have with this, um, and certainly, you know, the the awards rewards we got in June. What was that called? It was called Loan, the Loan uh, giveaway. I gave some right. of those as as giveaways to our staff, and they were happy with them. And um, you know, the growth we've had with crypto, I've given bonuses to to the team in crypto, and I know there's tax implications there, but um, it's just amazing seeing how Proton has grown. I remember putting. Uh, uh, ten thousand dollars in Proton, and then um, we made some. And again, this is not financial advice, and I'm not telling anyone to do anything with their money at all. I'm just talking first, you know, my own experience. But my God, we made over two thousand dollars, like in seventy two right. hours. So you know, there's opportunities, and it's nice to see Proton growing, and it's nice to see that it's uh, the volatility uh, is is going in an upward trend. So, yeah. Hey, Nathan, my uh, our. Oh. The uh, president of Protonverse is here. My wife. Valerie. Hi there. Nice you to meet to you. Something about Protonverse and the metaverse, and no. I'm not sure. We, I'm not sure we that I that I sort of um, uh, added up to what Andrew was saying or whatnot about about wanted to hear so much about the Protonverse. We are our, really a very new company, very young company, getting started, um, and and we have a lot of plans that we can't talk about today, but. It's very, very exciting what's happening in in the metaverse for sure. What do you virtual, want to know? Virtual titles, virtual land. What do you want to know? And I, I, I think that we we have a lot to talk about, Nathan. With well, your product. Uh, Nathan, I'm excited. We've got our um, we've got uh, three programmers that are going to be, you know, right off the bat are going to be. Um, oh, you already talked about that. Uh, well, it, we we have a uh, a board. We've got an advisory board. We're putting together uh, yep. almost almost complete. Um, we've been, I think we've invited you to the advisory board. Um, some of these are paid positions. We're mm -hmm. excited about that. Uh, we'll have funding. We're a nonprofit. Did you talk about yeah, that? We're cutting new territory in a way. Yeah, but there yeah. are uh, nine or ten nonprofits, uh, cryptocurrency companies out there already in America. Where, where's Nathan? Hi, everybody. Um, we yeah, well, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in okay. Toronto, Canada, but we're, our company is U.S. based. Okay, well, we're uh, it's cutting edge stuff. We we've had to scramble because you have to have your uh, ducks in a row. You've got it for nonprofits and cryptocurrencies combined. You you've still got to have your your uh, uh, CPAs, your attorneys, your all your paperwork, and 
So we can take tax deductible donations now and you will get a receipt within the uh, 12 hours, I think, or 24 hours if you do give to Proton First Wallet. So we're excited about that. And, That's awesome. And so anybody can donate now if they need a tax deductible donation. Um, and we will uh, also be having uh, a professional CPA audit us when needed. Um, like I said, we, we are excited that you have asked to be on the advisory board and we're really uh, looking for those kind of partnerships uh, because we we know that we uh, to have the the all around skill base that we need kind of like a university this is how we look at protonverse kind of like a university mm -hmm. system where we pull people from all over the world who want to work on the this project because we wanted to to keep it an open metaverse nonprofit for this reason family friendly um, to, that gives us a unique brand this way and it also gives us a uh, a special way to protect um, people who have families like everybody on the board, our board does. Yeah. And, and it, it just really gives us a, I think a, a sweeter edge over these metaverses that, you know, Facebook is doing that anything goes. I didn't want anything to go in our, our little corner of the metaverse. We also want to provide a richer experience than what we've, than what we've seen. I don't know if you remember Lawnmower Man from the 90s or. <laughs> yes. <laughs> access, of, access denied. Access granted. Yeah. yeah. A lot yeah. of it still looks like that today. <laughs> Surprise! Yeah, it does. So the stage, some of it hasn't changed. So well, we're like we're, we want to be like the Cadillac of metaverses. You do absolutely, and it, and it keeps with the brand, um, and and that's that's something I'm really proud of. Uh, Marshall and team doing is keeping the standards high. Um, the the whole idea. Well, let me of, tell you the, yeah. yeah. Let me yeah. tell you the story with Marshall. Um, we sure. talked to him that same night that we, uh, uh, basically got our uh. uh proton verse uh uh trademark trademarked uh and, nice. and he's like he's like oh i'm so excited you know work uh i'd like you to work with paul and others and we're like yes we we'd love and he asked you know um what he wants to do with us and we said we we just want to make sure that we have creative control over over this so he said well why don't you just run with it kind of stuff and so we have yeah that's awesome and it's so cool because you know, um, we Wes Williams, who's an advisor to our, our companies, we're you know he's a, a share a member owner. I should say shareholder member owner because we're a LLC. Has been talking about metaverses, and it's so cool to see this um, so close to to us now that it's in Proton, and um, obviously big supporters of Proton. Proton is the main infrastructure provider for smart escrow. Um, we are open to other blockchains that can provide other stable coins, but so far Proton's been the best. And and then you guys with um, Protonverse and and just with the NFTs and stuff that are out there as well. I think it's, it's awesome. It's all coming together, you know. Well, it yes, is. and and I, we our uh, Pro V uh, token will be for sale to buy and exchange things and resell things on uh, Protonverse. Excellent. So we, you know, so our partners cool. will be getting some of that. Yeah. No problem. That's excellent. Well, you know, when I and I'm yeah, because I, I hadn't publicly disclosed uh, joining as an advisor, but I'm glad you guys did. So I was with <laughs> within the constructs of uh, the NDA. Um, however, if you disclose it, yeah, I'm, I'm actually joining as an advisor to Protonverse, um, and uh, Ubiquity will be utilizing that service, doing something with NF, you know, something with uh, excuse me, the um, the multiverse with. Um, I mean, we're still figuring that out, I guess, in terms of ubiquity. Right. Well, in terms of our, our board has approved you, so I can announce it. Okay, thank you. Beautiful. We'll put out a press release next week. Great. <laughs> New Year sometime. That's what we were waiting for. Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, actually, no, we have time. I mean, it's so we have we could put it out before uh, before <laughs> the the New Year. I, I'm one of those people. I we have all these templates that we can use. So yeah, I'd love to put something together before the end of the week before uh, New Year's Day. That great. sounds great. Awesome. We are, we are always in the market for uh, develop uh, uh, programmers. Uh, we want yeah. a small team at first, but you know anybody we don't use now, we'll keep them on the back burner for later. Because once this thing is going, you know, we, I envision us having uh, two thousand people working on this project eventually. They're oh yeah, to... scale up, right? They say scale oh, yeah. up, and uh, we're, we're you know we're happy to support you guys, uh, and and certainly you know in terms of you know advice and. The right people and Wes, you know, he's uh, he said so fun to see this coming together. Yeah, all of us will work together, and that's what it's all about, you know. It's just supporting each other, um, 
giving ideas, giving uh, constructive feedback, and just uh, being supportive. And I think that's what's so awesome about the Proton community uh, that I've experienced. And we all have fun, and sometimes we get, you know, the trolls on the Telegram group, but they're handled pretty quickly, pretty swiftly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are. And sometimes I'm the troll, and they're like, Nathan, shut up. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah. It's a great community. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we have about one minute left, but yeah, everyone's saying congrats, uh, great project. Uh, yeah. Great we to see we hope too. to get something up in the next couple of months as at least the portal, uh, nice. get a couple of NFT people, uh, people's galleries up and, and again, people can donate right now to Proton Burst tax deductible donation, and they will get a tax deductible receipt on awesome. the blockchain on Proton blockchain. Is your website online right now? It's not, but it will be up shortly. Shortly, okay. Well, how, maybe uh, type in uh, just your email address, contact info, and uh, you know people well, want to support it's you. Protonverse.org, Protonverse.org. You can see our domains up, but we just we uh, had a few uh, delays. Okay, cool. Yeah, but but uh, you just put your email addresses on there as well. Just type it up. Okay. Yeah, and uh, people can stay in contact. Of course, um, you know this archive will be online for forever. Hopefully, yeah. I'll, put, I'll put this online on YouTube and we'll distribute that as well. So, um, well, thanks so much. You guys are a lovely couple and doing great things, changing the world. Thank you. And thank, thank you, you for Nathan, your, you your support and support, <laughs> you guys. We love what you're doing and thank love you. You when you need another blog article. It sounds good. Let's let's talk after this, uh, maybe even oh, probably tomorrow. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll get uh, we'll get everyone else started. So, thank you so much to you both. Thank you, Nathan. Yeah, yeah. bye bye. Bye. Right, thanks. Bye. Okay, up next is, that was great, by the way. Up next is Laura Pamatian. Hopefully I'm saying your name right. You'll correct me. And Okay, Laura, I have invited you. <laughs> Accepted and connecting. Uh, in this case, I will give Laura the bio. I'll read her bio here. Oh, let's make sure she's online. So, um... Laura is a South uh, Florida resident, 19 years experience in the domestic and international marketing and sales of luxury goods and vertical real estate development, specializing in investment products. Uh, she's represented numerous five-star global recognized brands, including the Ritz-Carlton, Mandarin Oriental, uh, is it Auburg Resort? Resorts? Auberg Resort? Auberge. Auberge. There you go. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. uh, Grand Hyatt. So, a keyboard member of the Growing Fibery Miami chapter. That's, that's cool. We're both uh, regional chairs. Um, and Laura's instrumental in uh, branding Fibery throughout uh, South Florida, state of South Florida. Member of uh, Government Blockchain Association, so are we. Um, the Real Estate Committee, FBBA's Real Estate Committee, Florida Blockchain Association. I think we're actually members of that as well, Ubiquity. Um, and she recognizes initiatives and events to create more public and private sector awareness and understanding of the transformative uh, technology blockchain brings to the real estate industry. I need some water. <laughs> so you go ahead. I will get some water. Thank you so much, Laura. Hi, how are you? Thank you so much for having me, Nathan. I really appreciate being here. I, um, I, I don't know. I mean, the, the speakers that you've had, I don't even know how I'm, I'm going to follow them, Susie. And you're, you're, uh, it's just been amazing. And thank you for hosting this. So I'll, thank you for having me. Um, like Nathan said, I've been in real estate and development for 19 years now. I started my career on the island of Maui. I'm just going to give you a little little background on me. I went into um, pre-construction, new construction very early in my career. And now 12 projects later, I have um, decided to pivot my entire career into the blockchain space because of what's happening. And I find that particularly um, when we're talking about, you know, commercial real estate, um, tokenization, and, and in that topic, there, it, it's just such a, um, there's just so much opportunity, right? It's just a game changer in what's happening. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about real estate tokenization. I am a real estate consultant. I started Height Zero Real Estate and Consulting um, for exactly that reason, to bridge the gap for developers who are in the real estate um, development commercial side, and then to be able to 
help them find their way and their journey through uh, the opportunity of tokenization, oh, oh, along with some other technologies, right? Because there's there's so many things that we can fold into the mix with the NFTs and with the metaverse and with um, you know transactions that are happening on the blockchain um, in, in addition to tokenization. But real estate tokenization is, um, you know, what does that even mean? It's basically, I'll just kind of give you an example. If you have a, um, like a multifamily residential high rise, right? And, and say that's a hundred million dollar product property and the owner of that property has equity in that property and say, say $50 million and they want to recapitalize to either reinvest in that property or to redeploy that capital um, technology. Now we can, we can, we can access that $50 million, right? We will create a, an entity through um, an SPV and then the entity will be, um, you know, you register this offering with the SEC. So it is a security token. It's not an NFT. Um, and then we sell those shares to investors, right? Basically, this is the short version, but these investors will come in, they will um, invest with their accredited investors, depending on the reg that you're uh, filing, they will, they will invest in this property. And then the, the owner can redeploy that capital. The investors, the benefit really is that they have liquidity, right? You're giving the yeah. owner of, of the property and the owners of um, of the investment liquidity, which is really, really important. It's something that you you wouldn't have otherwise, right? Without tokenization. So it's a huge benefit. It's They're able to trade um, in and out of that investment if they'd like to, um, depending on the regulation. If it's a year lockup, they would be able to trade out of that uh, that investment in a year. So not only are they, um, you know, not only is it accessible, right? You're making commercial product accessible for investors now, like myself, right? If I wanted to invest if, or, or Nathan or somebody that wanted to invest in commercial product, um, where we're seeing this go is, you know, there might be offerings, for instance, as an example, there might be a, a hotel property, maybe a Ritz Carlton that was tokenized in um, Japan, right? Or there might be a, a Ritz Carlton property that was tokenized in the Caribbean, right? And maybe you are uh, part of the Ritz Carlton affinity group and you want to own in, in that, um, you know, in that in that property and that brand, then you would be able to purchase this real estate on the secondary market and invest and trade in and out of um, in and out of that property. And I think that it's cool because I, you know, you can even have smart contracts that require that the that the party waits for you know a year, and so you can you know you can have smart contracts that dictate those rules as well, right? Rather than just contra like regular contracts. Oh, did we lose her? I think we lost her. One sec. I'll uh, bring Laura back. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Technology. Yeah. <laughs> they happen. No, we, we roll with it. Um, I was going to say that, um, you know, you mentioned lock updates and things that you can probably even have smart contracts that would disable that or um, um, just enforce those kind of rules rather yeah, than. Exactly. Yeah, yeah right. exactly. And that's a really big, that's something that we're work. you know, uh, we're working through now with properties that have, have loans, you know, you have a loan on the property and you don't want to jeopardize that loan, right? So there's rules that you can write into the smart contract that would prevent anyone or, you know, any investor from owning more than say 10%, right? Of, of that particular property. And that way you protect yourself and, um, and your, you know, the loan that you have on, on the asset. Yeah, so absolutely. Done with that. Yeah, it's fascinating. It's really exciting. And, and I love what's happening in the space. I think that 
there is so much room to grow and and there's a lot of other things that are going to come of it and you know yep. just being able to to democratize um it, it's just it's fair right it makes everything makes the world fair it, it <laughs> does and it yeah, yeah absolutely and i mean i know that you had reached out to us uh, in terms of tokenization and um you know we've certainly gotten a lot of inquiries and we've worked on pilots and you know we're but then we got so distracted with smart escrow and stuff. So that's kind of gone on the, on the back burner, but we're always interested in, you know, tokenization platforms and um, people who are pushing that. So I think ubiquity, what we'll probably do is push clients to you and we can help each other, you know, yeah, potential cool. customers. Um, and cause if you, you know, you're working towards building a platform like this, I think it's like, why reinvent the wheel? And um, you know, our attitude is like at ubiquity has always been, um, rising tides lift all boats, and mm -hmm. so we. There are people like the companies like Proppy out there, and, and others that are that exist that I, I think have a good chance of success in their own, uh, you know, respective areas of focus and areas of focus. And I think it's 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 a good thing. I definitely think it's a good thing that we're all trying to make a difference. I mean, the what the real estate industry is multi trillion dollar industry globally, yeah. so there's a lot of room for success. Yeah, I agree. And there's a lot of platforms out there, right? And they're all doing different things. And they're all right now, they're all doing them in different ways. There's like 10 ways to skin a cat, right? So you have different yeah. platforms in different areas of the world that are that are are doing the same thing, just a little different, right? Some of them are actually issuing securitized NFTs, right? And that's new. That's something that I'm I'm still trying to kind of get my mind around and how they're going to work through that. But that's really fascinating. Um, you know, when we're talking about uh, right now, typically it's right a security token. So they're interchangeable, right? They're fungible. They're not, it's not something that's unique like an NFT. So it's different. Um, and then how they go about doing that and tracking it and, and keeping track of it and, and how they're trading and things like that um, is pretty fascinating. For myself, you know, I, I have become familiar with, with, a lot of the the top tokenization companies in the world right whether they're here in the us or in canada or in dubai yeah. or in you know south africa or denmark or wherever they might be um and having a relationship with them and understanding what it is that they're doing for 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 what i'm doing with developers developers would come to me and say you know well what here's here's my project can you know you kind of take me through assess it and determine what is the best path what is the the best type of um you know the best type of platform do you need a marketing arm you know do you already have an internal database that you can present your offering to you know are you going to need um, a marketplace um you know what's going to happen on the secondary market you know there's so many questions and and it just for us, we're just making it easy for developers to just cut through all of the the unknown and go right to the heart of it and and go ahead and get started, right? Because it takes it would take a long time to go through all of all of this, you know, all of the different options out there. And some of them are excellent, right? A lot of them are excellent. And then there's others that are not, right? And you just gotta be really careful. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, I keep going back to the whole world of, you know, ICOs in 2017, 2018. And, you know, back then the small percentage, maybe there were 5% that were legitimate, but then even out of that 5%, maybe 2% had a chance of success and or more tenable projects, right? So um, I think those percentages have increased and, and people are becoming more savvy. But uh, yeah, people just need to do their own due diligence and be careful, right? Buyer beware. Yeah. Caveat emptor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And and um, you know, like to tie in with Susie and what they're doing. I mean, they're, I mean, they're pioneering right that in that space. But in yeah. in the same respect, being able to have this um, opportunity to use to use crypto right in these purchases or to um, eventually be able to trade these tokens, these security tokens. Um, for other product. I mean, it's just, there's just so many interesting things that are going to come of it. It's so exciting. Oh, that. absolutely. Yeah. And, and things are changing so quickly. It's important to, I think, at least keep an eye on what's happening, you know, with multiverses and NFTs. And then we're, you know, we're exploring the new year NFT um, for real estate and, and, and potentially just 
all sorts of use cases. It's just, yeah, everyone has to kind of keep an eye on what's going on. And that could be as easy as just, uh, you know, how, like for myself, I just I subscribe to a lot of uh, the newsletters, but I also have keywords on Google that I get updates on. So mm -hmm. that usually gives me uh, <laughs> the, the latest very quickly. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Just being yeah. able to kind of keep up because it's changing keep every up. single day. And I do the it's, same. Oh, I yeah. And read and read and I share as much as I can. And it's like every day it's like I'm learning something mind blowing. And I'm, especially this thing with the metaverse and what's happening in the metaverse. Yeah. And, you know, what we're we're talking about with um, being able to integrate real, real assets in the metaverse and then having that, you know, um convert somehow to back into the real world right so yeah. for instance you have a a property that a um i don't know developer is going to tokenize and they are issuing security tokens and then they're also going to issue you know nfts on the actual residential product and then you know how do we tie that into the metaverse do, do they have a property in the metaverse and if they have a property there what does your uh, your NFT get you in the metaverse, and how you know how can you how you can access and tie everything together? Um, it, yeah. It's just going to be so awesome to see it and watch it, it happen. It, it will, yeah, it will. And I mean, it, for us, we're interested in um, you know what some of these other companies are doing. Like um, Real Items is one of those companies, and you know mm -hmm. they were on. Uh, I think they were they were on uh, V Chain, but I, I know I know that they're looking at other blockchains as well. And this idea of like a physical digital um, item asset that could be with a QR code or it could be, you know, using other kinds of technology as well uh, to tie in maybe even, uh, you know, I don't know, like a water heater, for, for instance, you have a QR code yeah. and, and you can scan that and get like the history of that. And then it would yeah. tie into this like uh, NFT world. Um, you know, they're they're pushing the envelope. Um, innovation as well and we're looking to work with them in the new year and so it's just been there's so much going on right and it's, it's hard to kind of keep up sometimes but yeah so we have that. these uh, webinars right we have these webinars to kind of help all of us relinquish our own ignorance and naivety yeah. and learn and and keep in contact so yeah exactly and i welcome that i mean if there's ever a discovery call that i can have right i have i have discovery calls lined up as, as often as i can and just to talk and have a conversation and and yep. figure out how we collaborate and how we you know work together or come up with new ideas and um you know just to help each other you know because yep. really, and that's what i love so much about this space is that it's really about like you said you know all boats are going to rise with the tide and it's just exactly yep. that everybody wants everyone to win and that's what i love about this space me too me too and i'd say that that was the biggest thing that i was attracted to you know we used to call it the non-financial uses of the blockchain and that's mm -hmm. such an outdated term now because we have DeFi and that can <laughs> define financial uh but i just uh one thing i loved about the community was was it's it's more than just a zero-sum game mentality and i hate that i always hated that uh about the you know the the crypto wars and then you know even with the the voice over ip world that i used to be from uh before i got into crypto world it's like oh there has to be one winner one winner takes all no collaboration you know no collaborative uh competition it just that, that bothered me so much and it's nice to see that that attitude is shifting in the right direction um yeah. Because there is ways for us to work together. I mean, what is the enemy? The enemy is a lack of progress, or it could be these multinational companies that are backed by the government that could try to swoop up, you know, large sums of the market share. Look at what Facebook, aka Meta, is trying to do. And I mean, I, I mean, I welcome that, but they're they're so large. It's like you know, we all have to kind of work together. Uh, free market. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so we have two minutes uh, in terms of Q&A. If, if anyone has questions, people certainly have made comments here. Um, talked about trolls. That was earlier. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, funny. You're trolling your own. Your oh, yeah. Yeah. I like to joke around on the Telegram group. With Proton, yeah. Kind of keep people on their, their toes. Like, oh, okay. Hi, Nathan. <laughs> uh, oh, it's very disruptive. It'll be great to see what's uh, going to happen in the future. Yeah. Royce is right. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so, there's least, so, much happening. so if there's ever anything I can do to help anyone in their business or support them in their business, like, please reach out. Nathan, you've been amazing. I can't oh, thank, thank you. you enough. Yeah. Thank you. You're so welcome. Much.
I, mm -hmm. I feel bad that it took you a while to get a hold of me. Um, <laughs> and everyone says the same thing. Wes was like, you know, I, again, I don't try to purposely ignore it. So I'm, I'm learning how to delegate very well. And uh, now that we, we got things under control, uh, I'm glad that you were persistent. Persistence beats resistance and you got my attention. And I see, honestly, I learned so much about what's going on in the crypto space because of you on LinkedIn. You're yeah. like, really blowing my mind on what a lot of the stuff you post so it's like oh wow i didn't know that company existed or i didn't know that they were doing that anymore or, or new things or whatever so um it, by the way guys if, if if i sound like i'm really congested i actually am and there's a high chance i have covid <laughs> a friend of mine got covid he tested positive my body's aching i feel really flush and tired um uh, actually a gentleman who was supposed to speak today who's up next, who I'm going to talk for uh, a little bit. I'll do my best here. Uh, he is uh, Carson Harris. So Carson, if you're here, man, uh, say hi. You're going to have to type for me. <laughs> um, Carson, if your colleague is here and they want to go on webcam uh, or just audio, that'd be cool. So I'll, I'll do my best to, to kind of explain what Carson's vision is coming up here. Uh, mm -hmm. Otherwise, yeah. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure if I got COVID, but it's... Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Carson says he wants to speak. I love that attitude, my friend. <laughs> we'll do our best together. Okay. Two COVID uh, <laughs> folks. Okay. All right. Well, Thank hey. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Being here. Laura, you're the best. best Everyone. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to all of the, you know, success and everything in the new year and, and everything that you guys are going to do. I'm oh, thank you. Well, you're part of it. You're, you're, um, um, your company is Height Zero's uh, partnered with uh, Ubiquity. We announced that recently. And so how about this? Post your website address, uh, your email address, and uh, we'll all keep in contact, okay? That sounds great. Thanks okay, so awesome. much. Have a great evening. Take, Take care. care. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye. All right, next up is Mr. Carson. All right, Carson. I'm like scrolling, like I said, it's. I don't think it's really alphabetical here. It's weird. Okay, Carson Harris, you're up, my friend. So Carson's uh, description is the bubble is not a bubble. It's a time capsule. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, cooperation is key for sure. Oh, there you are. Hey, how you Everybody, feeling, man? Man, I am. Uh... Screen frozen. My family oh. went to uh, our. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, your video is freezing. Maybe you can. Uh, I'll toggle your video here. How, how about that? Can you? Can you? Uh, is that better? If if y'all can see me, that's fine. Oh you know, yeah, I, I, I just toggled your video off because I think it's a bandwidth issue. But you can go ahead and talk. Oh, okay. Audio. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I. Um... So, uh, so my, my family went to, uh, to our, our, on my dad's side, you know, our Christmas and, um, had bad feelings about, you know, the possibility of a lot of people, uh, and the possibilities of getting sick. <clears throat> I didn't go, uh, as I was, I was watching a dog <clears throat> and, um, right when they got back the next day, I started to feel a little tingle in the back of my throat. And then the next uh -oh. day it was like a freight train hit me. So, but, uh, I seem to be, I seem to be on the, on the downhill slide here. So. Oh, that's uh, good. Should, yeah, that's should be good. on my way back up. But uh, that's good. It's scary. I... Yeah, it's scary. And I mean, like, I, I actually same thing as you because you were, uh, you were MIA. And by the way, don't feel bad about that. Um, you were MIA for you said over twenty four hours. I was so ill the other day, uh, Tuesday, I guess it was. I slept for over 24 hours my team some of my team members were like nathan are you alive and i'm like yeah like next time just check in i'm like well i thought rescheduling our advisory call with a little note was enough but not everyone reads that email so <laughs> yeah and i'm sure you didn't i'm sure you didn't anticipate being asleep for such a long time you know your oh no body, yeah your body was telling you something yeah absolutely but, uh, but uh I, you know i appreciate you uh you thinking of me during this time i this is a, a pleasant uh surprise to me and um, a little bit about myself, uh, as I've learned so much about, you know, these illustrious people here and uh, really learning, you know, it's forming such a great conversation around the, you know, the benefits that can come out of, uh, you know, utilizing the blockchain technology to its fullest extent, you know, in a way that can benefit all while still, you know, creating a 
uh, let's just call it modest profit for those who were willing to take the risk in creating such a thing. Mm -hmm. um, I am 27. I have grown up in Memphis. I went to the University of Memphis, graduated in finance, um, chose finance because uh, there was a girl in my life whom at a young age, you know, you think you want to marry and it's a family that you have to produce you know, you have to be above the average, right? You know, just about in all areas. And so yeah. on the financial side, I've, you know, I was like, okay, well, I guess finance, I don't know. That was just my uh, initial inclination. And so I say, okay, I'm going to learn finance better than anybody in the world's ever learned finance. You know, I'm going to do it. And so I was probably 18 at the time, 19 at the time. And <laughs> this was 2013, 2014 which is when I'm hearing some of these, these previous speakers, uh, I'm sitting here jealously about their entrance into crypto. Um, I should have known at the time that crypto would ultimately be the play that would, uh, or I should I say bag instead, it would be the bag that would, uh, ultimately bear the, the brunt of the, uh, let's call it in deflating, uh, the bubble, the fiat bubble that, is yeah. kind of the reason why we're all here today. Uh, I should have seen it at the time as as the end, end game, but I, you know, unfortunately, I did not. And uh, and so I go in and I study normal traditional finance, and it was extremely helpful. But there were, it was as if, uh, and I apologize if I have to <laughs> take a few breaths or, and whatnot. My uh, my lungs are not up to up to par today. Oh. Um, Take your time. If you need to talk slower, take your time. Yeah, no rush. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Um, You're welcome. And so, you know, as I'm as I'm studying these things, uh, you know, and you, and you go through these courses and you're learning these these layers that then layer on top of layers that you previously learned, right? And uh, it just appeared to me that there that, that that the university and that this is not the fault of any specific university, especially not the one that I went to. I commend my university for accepting my uh, unusual, but I think at this moment can be considered pretty apt uh, concerns with uh, the, the fringes of the logic that is used to construct, you know, the capital asset pricing models and, and the various uh, weighted average costs of capital and such that uh, are used, you know, the tools by which uh, the managers use uh, to come up with decisions regarding the going concern that is the entity that employs them. And so um, I end up graduating finally because, you know, I only had to fail so many classes before I finally said, okay, it doesn't matter how wrong you think they are. You still got to get an A in their wrong things or a C, you know, a C in their wrong thing. And yeah. so I finally graduate and <laughs> go and consult for, um, some very, very uh, successful, prescient, intellectual, and savvy entrepreneurs across all domains of professional uh, influence, you know, whether it be accounting, le uh, estate planning with legal, uh, financial strategy, investment management, um, the commodities and leveraged uh, assets such as futures and options on futures, <laughs> which, you know, when you put all those things together, you, you, you have what is considered a family office uh, in today's jargon. Uh, yep. in, in my case, I was doing this, con con uh, this consultative work for a startup multifamily office, uh, which is where, you know, just as I'm sure you would imagine, you instead of having one family that's worth a half billion, you have 10 families that are each worth 50 million and you pull your resources together and uh, you essentially share these professional stewards and fiduciaries over the uh, total wealth that's been aggregated in order to best serve each family in their own way. Uh, and, you know, there's an art form involved <coughs> when uh, you can aggregate these entities, these families, uh, disparate, siloed, segregated wealth stacks into uh, investments that are both public, which is that's very cut and dry easy, but also private endeavors, 
uh, as well as the more exotic hedge fund stuff um, that a lot of wealthy families like to have access to due to the uh, beneficial mathematics involved with uh, risk mitigated leverage. And so <laughs> I learned a, a incredible amount uh, from a practical standpoint uh, under those two or three years of, of, of consulting work. And in that time, um, created some products uh, around uh, easing the burdens by which the, or e easing the burdens that would be faced by the farmers if they truly chose to uh, endeavor down the road of organic farming. <laughs> um, as well as uh, back in April, uh, introducing a new asset class. So to be more specific, introducing a uh, hedge fund manager consultant type firm to a, which represented, you know, their management of, of their fund represented the introduction of a, of a new asset class to the largest self-directed IRA brokerage platform in the world, which um, although <clears throat> didn't benefit me directly, it has benefited many thousands of people and especially, uh, those near the front lines of civilian, uh, injury and emergency, which, you know, being the first responders and their 401k plans, um, which is, uh, something that can help me sleep at night in a world full of monsters because you know as as most people here i'm sure are aware bonds are no longer a good source of uh security or defense from the uh increasingly uh, erratic and un you know illogical markets and their dynamics right i, I think if everybody were to go back to uh march 2020 and then fast forward to October 2020 or even January or February of this year, they'd say, I have I could never have seen the markets be where they are today. If unless the bubble really is not a bubble, but rather a time capsule. It is the federal monetary policies that have been in place <coughs> in earnest since Bernanke, but in reality, since uh, since Greenspan, yep. with his yep. infamous put in the eight, in eighty seven, and that has since then created a false sense of safety beneath the uh, you know as a backstop beneath those uh, speculators and hedgers alike, uh, but but most importantly beneath the very large too big to fail institutions. And they got to become too big to fail simply because of this backstop. And so yeah, cronyism with the government. Yeah, uh, certainly. And, and so I, I would, think you, would you say as a, it was an argument that, I mean, it's just a, you take a look at it from a macro economic perspective as well. And it's like, what philosophy do you follow? A, a lot of uh, post Keynesians or, you know, true Keynesians versus those who would adhere to the, you know, Austrian school of economics. Um, I would be the latter. <laughs> I got into crypto yeah. because of because of uh, gold and silver and uh, hard assets. So, <laughs> well, yeah. you know that's exactly and that's exactly right. You know, and uh, there is a there, there there's a very very smart man uh, in Singapore who is a, a hedge fund manager for uh, he he owns you know deeply uh, a book of deeply convex um, payoffs. You know, he has essentially options. These are derivatives that he owns that uh, have been sold by pension firms uh, and, and state sponsored funds in Asia and uh, some, uh, some in Europe, but mostly in Asia and South Korea. And um, they have sold these, 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 the, the rights to these very un, you know, imp very improbable, but highly, highly impactful, um, options, payoff options, you know, you know, yeah. regarding the, the cost to be incurred upon some event taking place, but the event's very improbable. So they sell it and that's called, that's, that's why they're, you know, they have, uh, yield enhanced or income enhanced portfolios. Well, how, well, what does that mean? How do they have that? Well, all it means is they've taken their book 
and they've taken all the things that they look at as being improbable to happen and they sell those contracts off to increase the yield. And so he is a major buyer of these things. And um, him and I share a lot of views. And his one of the questions in his monthly commentary recently was X versus F of X. And that was the title of this of his monthly commentary. And what that means is, uh, you know, uh, you have X and then the function of X. Right. And that's that's mm-hmm. the, that's the that's what we're all that's what, what we're trying to figure out is, you know, if you lose if 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 your revenues fall 50 million dollars, you lose 50 million dollars. But if your revenue falls 80 million dollars, you lose 500 million dollars. Does that make sense? You see yep. the nonlinear over there, 50 to 75, yep. 75 to 500. Yeah, that's the F of X that we're talking about from the central bank standpoint. My whole point being in the title of this of my little spiel here, the bubble is not a bubble. It's a time capsule is that what I believe is taking place is that you have everyone who knows what damn time it is from a global macro geopolitical standpoint knows that the central banks are so far beyond the pale that literally you have to laugh about it because your nervousness and anxiety towards the extent of the biblical implications are such that you, it just manifests manifests itself into laughter. (laughs) And so what do you, what do we do about this? Right? I mean, that's really, that's really the question. And so it's my, I am of the opinion and it is subject to change at any time uh, regarding, you know, any type of new information that comes into the fold that uh, we are within a very <clears throat> unique uh, opportunity, a unique relation, uh, a unique situational relationship with history uh, and it right now is in the form of a twilight zone where we appear to be on the precipice as a globe, as a global monetary order. And there has to be a, a technological revolution in the information infrastructure in order for us to uh, reach escape velocity from the overbearing debt loads that we have, which are on the precipice. Well, so let me, to be more clear, the overarching debt loads themselves. And then we have the variable and fixed rate uh, interest rate contractual agreements tied to those debts, those debt loads, right? Which, which in this inflationary kind of spiral, we seem to be heading towards. Yep. That is going to be disastrous, right? From a monetary stability standpoint, globally. Think 2008, right? 2020 was a lot different than 2008 in terms of the contagion. And so I, it's funny, I actually made a note when Susie was, was, uh, was speaking uh, and she, she, <laughs> she was talking about the NFT craze. And it's, it's funny, I, I actually thought that uh, when I first heard of NFTs, uh, I, I literally thought that it was the uh, canary in the coal mine for the peak of the bubble. Uh, but it yeah. I couldn't have been further from the from the it couldn't have been further from the truth, in my opinion. It to me seems to be one of the most powerful tools uh, that, when fully utilized to its fullest extent, um, would be nothing less than revolutionary and role changing. And, it will uh, be, yeah, good. yeah, and you only have to be. I mean, just take a look at the writing on the wall, right? I mean, so, some like big gold bug and silver, and I, that's what got me into crypto and really beginning stages. But take a look at like how you know the M two is not even uh, being monitored anymore by the Federal Reserve System, and you take a look at like just the money supply <laughs> and <laughs> how it's just increased exponentially in twenty twenty, and it's only going up, which of course will answer. The answer to that is inflation. How do you uh, hedge against inflation? Well, uh, assets that will, you know, act in response to it, right? And generally, that'd be like oil, uh, any kind of assets, like hard assets, uh, cryptocurrency. Bitcoin's a big one. It's uh, it's interesting world. I mean, even even NFTs. You just said, you know, it could be. Uh, it's interesting how things are going. You know, and and that's the thing with NFTs is you think about it. It's nothing more than a than a uh, a uh, what's a good way to put it? It's 
you wouldn't call it a ledger per se, right? But you would call it a, a smart contract Russian nesting doll that can be interoperable through, yep. through did, you know, distributed ledger technologies. Right. And so it gets really interesting when you start thinking about, uh, you know, streaming rights, royalty rights. And, uh, yep. as I believe one, uh, very intelligent one, it might've been Darcy was talking about, um, uh, da, 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 uh, Oh man, I just lost my train of thought. Um, That's okay. Take your time. Streaming rights. Oh, 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 yeah. It was Darcy talking about using an SPV, you know, having a special purpose vehicle where essentially you can. Uh, oh, that, uh, that was Laura, I believe. Was that, was, oh, that yeah, was, was Laura. Laura. Sorry. Excuse me. Yeah. That's okay. Laura, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Laura it's, it, talking about the SPV and, uh, and, you know, how you can essentially uh, have, a, have a have a company that owns the above ground mineral, mineral rights to whatever land you are seeking to develop upon or maybe conserve or maybe yeah. um, uh, just extract value and segregate the ownership aspects of the multi-dimensional growth that comes out of nature. Right. You know, it's it, it, exactly. Amazing. Hey, I, I don't mean to cut you off because we no, just, sir, just sir. ran out of time. Why don't we chat online? Um, I'm going to bring Justine on here because we are like, we have a pretty tight schedule for the next uh, hour here, but yes, um, fant fantastic chat. You sound you sound like you're doing better, and uh, I wish you all the best. And very intelligent man, I, I love these conversations, man. You're making me think in a different way, and uh, I'm sure everyone else would agree with that as well. With Nathan, you know, Drew, Nathan, thank you so much for thinking of me. This has been an absolute pleasure, and I look forward to seeing what we can all do together. Yeah, please be on future events. You're more than welcome. Yes, sir. Okay, all the best. Thank you you so take much. care. Yeah, bye bye. Bye. Okay, thank you so much. That was that was fantastic. Uh, really insightful, and it's. Uh, I, it's always nice to uh, talk to people who are give you a new perspective on how things are working and and their perspective on economics and a whole lot of stuff that I <laughs> kind of brushing up on and learning. So it's awesome. Uh, up next is Justina. I always pr pronounce your last name wrong. Oh, Osaka. I say it. Hi, Nathan. Can Hi. you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. It's Osowska. Oh, Soska, of course, Polish. <laughs> Soska. Yes. So, what, you're looking great, looking happy. And, uh, well, why don't you, because I don't think I have your bio listed here. Why don't you give you like a brief intro about yourself and give me the floor? Sure. Thanks, Nathan. Uh, so, yeah, my name is Justina Soska. I currently live in Montreal uh, and I founded Women in Blockchain Canada in 2019. I've been in the blockchain space. Um, through friends for quite a while now and been very happy to be here. Started out doing, going to conferences myself, realized there wasn't a lot of women in the space and wanted to create a, a space for women to, uh, a space for women to express themselves and to, to showcase their projects. And we're an inclusive organization, so we also have uh, speakers that are male, but it's predominantly to, to really uh, make a more, like a, a place where women can come uh, online and learn and uh, yeah so that's what I do we do events and we've been doing them in Ottawa and Montreal switched online due to COVID and we've partnered with Ubiquity uh, last year and very excited to be uh, to be working with them um, they've been a sponsor uh, of ours since the beginning so I have to thank Nathan for that always uh, always supporting us and we're happy to support him as well you're welcome so with that being said, I hope that gave everybody sort of a background of what I've been doing in the space. Um, my speech tonight is about interoperability. And I'm going to start with a little bit of a definition of what is interoperability. So according to Wikipedia, interoperability is a characteristic of a product or system whose interfaces are completely understood to work with other products or systems at present or in the future in either implementation or access without any restrictions. While the term which was officially initially defined for information technology or systems engineering services to allow for information exchange, a broader definition takes into account social, political, and organizational factors that impact system to system performance. So why is this such an important topic in, uh, in the blockchain space and why I think it relates so much to ubiquity is because one of the pain points, uh, well, this is 
first of all, I think everybody around the table knows that we're so early in the space. I mean, it's I feel even though we've been around and some people may feel it's been a long time, uh, it's so uh, it's still at such an infancy, this uh, this whole space. And uh, I just love what's been happening in terms of people creating bridges um, and creating an ability for the different uh, different blockchains to work together. So for those who may not know, I'm just going to provide a background. There's uh, other than Bitcoin, there's different blockchain solutions that allow like Ethereum things to be built on top of them. Um, but the thing is, uh, Ethereum gas fees have been really high. And so the users uh, have had to resort to layer two solutions and other people have come up with blockchains. Uh, that allow um, more interoperability. So it's kind of like what Ubiquity will do is allow banks and blockchains to communicate. Now, how do we get blockchain to blockchain communication? Uh, I feel that it's a very fascinating subject, especially in a for a space like real estate, where some people may not want to make the payments in uh you know, in Dogecoin or Bitcoin, you're going to need a lot of use of these stable coins and they, people may need to move them across platforms for these big transactions. And how can they do that? So the why is, well, it's so important because not everybody may want to pay with the same coin or receive with the same coin. And people who may be doing these purchases may need to move their money. And what's been happening is, for example, a platform like AnySwap, will allow a user to go between the Ethereum network and let's say Binance Smart Chain, or you can go and move the dollar between, uh, let's say, Avalanche Chain and you want to move it back to, to Binance. So there's companies that are allowing for uh, all the swaps to happen no matter what blockchain you're, you're working on. People are building bridges in the, in the system. So let's say... On Polkadot, there's the Akala system, which is so there. It's it's beautiful to see that there's going to be so much. The interoperability aspect is really being worked on in the space that people are are building products that really allow the users to go between blockchain. And what I love and how it ties into Ubiquity is allowing uh, that freedom for people to choose what they what they really want to do. And I know even right now, there's someone who wants to, who is working on creating uh, a platform that goes with any, like a stable coin that basically can be used on, on any, on any blockchain. So I think it's just fascinating how quickly things are moving in a space. And I see yeah. like this subject. Yeah, Nathan, you want to say something? Oh yeah. Just, <clears throat> that's actually intriguing to me <laughs> that the, the stable coin on any blockchain. Correct. So yeah. uh, his name is Daniela, and he's the uh, founder of Wonder uh, of Wonderland. And so uh, recently, I think they just did an IDO uh, yesterday, and he has a coin called Meme M I M. And anyway, you can even do loans from yourself to yourself on his uh, on his platform. And he's create like he's looking at doing a whole ecosystem that is helping people finance, having more uh, control over their own money. So I think it's a, it's a new space. There's going to be like, as you know, more regulations coming into the space in both in Canada and the US and internationally. It's a, it's so fast moving, but the technology is not stopping, right? So what we're seeing in this space is people are just like, well, I want to be able to move my money from here to here. How do I do that? And then people are creating those solutions that allow for that. And then you add something like Web3 and it's going to be like, people who are gaming and they want to move, let's say like from one, they want to be able to go from one chain to another. So I think it's, it's really fascinating because what you're also seeing is, I don't know if you know this, Nathan, but a lot of these launch pads that are allowing for people to crowdfund themselves are actually also cross chain. So you like, there's launch pads that can actually connect to any network. You can connect to Polygon, you can connect to Ethereum, you can connect to Avalanche, you can connect to uh, Ethereum. So it's yeah. it, it's fascinating to see that, it, like, you know, people thought, oh, we have a blockchain and that's the use and it's secure and you can put your data on it. But no, it's more like, well, people got creative. <laughs> and <what laughs> of course. And what you're actually having is the ability from you to go and say, have 
you know, you want to play a game on one chain, but then you want to come like get your stuff out of like get your money out of the game. And then you might want to do a, a transaction and put it to your bank, but your bank only connects to this particular chain. So how do you move between these chains and lower your fees? So, you know, another thing is like, how do we optimize fees? Um, for example, um, that's the whole point behind uh, what's it called? One inch. One inch, for example, goes across different exchanges finds the cheapest price for you and then quotes the cheapest price for you. So, you know, next thing you'll see is like, which an AI that's finding which chain offers the cheapest stable coin. And you can literally buying like some AIs calculating, like what's the stable coin on what chain. And it can actually go cross now. Now it can analyze the price and statistics cross chain and imagine oracles to that. And, you know, this becomes like a layer on a layer on a layer. Um, I don't want to get too technical here, but but does it remind you of like 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 cheap flights, like some of those sites that would just find the best deal on flights? Like che- I go use Cheapo exactly. Air and other ones, uh, uh, Hotwire, Tra- <laughs> yeah. Travala or something like that. Travala, think- there was Hotwire for a while. I mean, it kind of reminds you of that I from a labor mind. perspective. Exactly. So yeah. you know, right now yeah. you're limited. You go to the bank and you want to get your you know American dollar. You only have that one place and one seller. Well, now you're gonna have the whole world. And if you go cross chain and you have AI added to that, that's basically like, you know, for someone who's doing a $10 transaction, doesn't matter. But when you're doing a million dollars and maybe you're doing a, a, a wire, tra- like, well, not a wire, when you're a crypto transfer that's very large from one country to the next, you can be moving your whole company, you can be moving your whole family. Then that's when it becomes like, you know, or an enterprise that's doing it, like a comp, like a, a even banks. You know, this is even like this could be useful to banks, um, oh, totally. you know, when they're trading like this is this is going to like they're going to probably reverse the model and use it for themselves. I don't know what they're using right now, but I'm just saying like this is a whole new field that's coming in, into the space. And I think the 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 uses are just so vast um, and it's oh, fascinating. So, yeah, I don't know if you want to add anything. Oh, yeah. It. I mean, I just when I think of this, I think, well. This is another way, uh, especially when I, I hear the, the idea of uh, stable coins, another way to add another, you know, solution. I wouldn't say blockchain per, per se, but another, you know, a, you know interoperable solution that could uh, tie into smart escrow if we can support more than uh, the ones we do right now or we will be with uh, with Proton Chain. Would that be kind of cool to be able to add another uh, option for people? So. Well, I think you're right, uh, Nathan. I think like what we can work on together this year is maybe, um, you know, building a bridge for Ubiquity and Polkadot and Web3. Because I think yeah. the, the other thing beyond, um, you know, uh, you, you know, you're blockchain agnostic, but like, how can you bridge the data as well? You know, and where do you want to store the data? Will there be other data providers that you can like store your data on that have like ma- optimized storage? So um yeah i think it's gonna be a an interesting time like what's the fastest transactions and cheapest transactions per second versus anyway this i think we can get really deep into it and i don't know how of course how, how <laughs> well, we have we have some time i think you have like eight minutes um oh. but i but i would say this is like it's it's uh yeah just bring down the cost and then other solutions that could be like in addition to IPFS, like I, I love IPFS, but there's been a lot of complaints in terms of the the amount of nodes and in the uptime. I remember like a year ago, a year and a half ago, it was like 60% uptime. Well, that's unacceptable. I want nothing less than five nines in, in, a, in a good world, right? Four nines uh, uptime percentage, right? 99.99. Uh, it, it's then then like the storage, like storage layer add on, add on top of that, like storage with a J kind of help that. But if there's other Web3 solution, like Web3 solutions that could be created in addition to IPFS and these protocols, um, I'm, I'm totally open for that. Because mm-hmm. who, who the heck wants to store it all in like Amazon? <laughs> what happened to Amazon last month? Well, but that's what happened. They got hacked. So that's the other thing where like it's, you yeah. know, the world's just going to have to admit you have to be decentralized. The moment you're centralized, you're, you're, you're security liable, right? So yeah. Um, but I think, you know, again, every industry is still going to have growing pains. It's just blockchain safer. That's what it is. If you have multiple people running nodes, there's no one place of attack. 
it's a lot harder for you to attack that versus the traditional system, right? So, and I think like with what your solution provides and let's say finding like optimized storage, optimized cost by the, by the time more like as ubiquity continues with your growth, it's kind of like, you're going to have even more solutions to use, right? Because if you can optimize the storage, but then you can calculate the customer, the fastest price, um, you know, there's other things and other potential in that space as well beyond, you know, smart escrow. Absolutely. Part absolutely. Of it, right? Yeah. Well, we see, we absolutely, we always see, like we're seeing smart escrow, just the, f the first iteration is going to be private beta testing mm -hmm. it, you know, integrating with closing room solutions like Qualia and Resware, which is now part of Qualia, um, integrating with bank solutions. And that's going to be another uh, thing to deal with as well. Right. Like it's just going to be the new, new ballpark of security concerns and and all these other things that we're working towards uh but then then you get people on board and well like how do we stay innovative well with what you just said right with some of these uh, interoperability solutions actually implementing real web3 rather than in you know and you know we kind of look at like um elon musk and, and some of the other guys that are are being kind of cynical about web3 but i think it's coming and, and there's a lot of uh, a lot of opportunity here and you, what you just talked about sounds like it's Web3 right now. <laughs> it, it is. Yeah, exactly. It is it, the interoperability for sure. The parallel chains, like uh, like different, like still maintaining security and providing financial incentives for people not to cheat in the system, but having fast and cheap transactions per second. Yep. So there's a lot there. And then like putting the layer of the data of reality on top of that. So like other solutions like um you know oracles and data validation those are all other things you know like well okay how do you know that's the real price of the dollar and well where is that price of the dollar located you know it's beyond yeah. just uh it's beyond um it's beyond the space as well we're gonna need to work with traditional financial institutions and uh yeah. and and where the data is really coming from and there will be solution as you move in the space you need the you need to know that that's what's there. And then how do you know this stable coin is backed by something like the dollar, which is backed by the Fed, which in Canada is, you know, also another system. So how do you know what's what you need? We're also the real world data is going to be need to put on the blockchain and there needs to be like a way of validating that data as well. It's kind of like right now, there's a whole thing about, okay, well, you're going to pay, let's say someone pays a million dollars in advertising. Well, how do you know that your the viewers actually watched it? You know, how do you know they didn't just skip it or have an ad block or whatever? It's, uh, it's going to, I think Web3 is going to be a very interesting thing because now you're, at, you're also adding another layer of, of issues, you know? So this, the whole point of the the data also become the security and then the validity of it become very important. Yeah, absolutely. And you take a look at the biggest argument that we always had in, in terms of, well, the, the county recorders was, well, it's garbage in, garbage out. I think some of these solutions could could solve that, um, you know, with data entry and, and, and trusted sources sending data that would be recorded onto the blockchain. They don't have to be just transactions too. So something to think about I don't know, i'm rambling <laughs> but it's like i'm trying to think could that solve could it solve that problem well you know it's it's interesting you say that i i think it can i think that's where we're headed mm -hmm. and i think like the other thing that's coming is you know we can't forget what this industry is doing there's like what i heard earlier in the chat was you know there's still like real world sales but then like let, if you add metaverse sales and then like how can imagine people cross chain land in the metaverse oh how i was you, dreaming of that i was dreaming of that oh yeah when i was sick i was waking up <laughs> i was like dreaming of that that like interoperability between nfts maybe it was the medication i don't know but i was definitely well, no, i think that's that. definitely something that i'm thinking about too and yeah I, and like we're, uh, we're beyond proof of work too like delegated proof of stake and all these cool things that Proton is doing and, um, and you know, I'm trying to pump them a bit here, obviously, because they're, they're, they're partners, but just 
it's so cool and it's so cool to see what other what just what oracle like a lot of these oracle solutions are doing mm -hmm. too yeah does proton like interact with anybody else uh oh yeah i mean yeah i mean you take a look at the the proton app uh it's probably above my pay grade and understanding but i know that um we support multiple um mm -hmm. multiple currencies you know do um atomic swaps with zero fees across multiple um you know cryptocurrencies stable coin support and uh yeah, I'll, I'll, you know what? I'll, I'll have one of the other uh, Proton people speak up to this <laughs> more than that because you're talking to someone who's a little bit sick at the moment. But um, yeah, I, I guess maybe, how about this? Ask the question in there, like type it up, and we'll get you an answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Pro, I mean, that, you know, that's why we're so excited with with what Proton's doing in terms of the zero fees, the uh, high transactions per second. Um, you know, that's why we're like betting on it. Yeah, protons. Yeah, proton swap. Yeah, exactly. one of the yeah one of the things in the space that's really I think underlooked is people never thought that Ethereum would have this level of gas fees. I mean, people are going into gas wars. I don't know if anybody yep. in the room has participated in an NFT drop or anything like that. It's absolute madness. I think Adidas had their NFT law. Um, they did a with Border Yacht Club. They did like a, a drop the other week, and you could mint the NFTs. They tripled in price within like two minutes, and I think they had ten thousand, and they were sold out within minutes. And yeah. people who are participating in this are literally just paying for the gas fee to go faster to outbid the other people who are waiting for their transaction to pass. Crazy, it's crazy. Well, actually, so on that note, um, we are running out of time here for you but please keep chatting with us um next person we actually have up is uh joy case uh, but awesome job man mind-blowing <laughs> this is fantastic stuff so Thank really you, appreciate man. it justina you're an awesome friend and partner to us and uh looking forward to collaborating in 2022 yes take care bye-bye good yeah, night. you as well take care bye-bye bye-bye bye okay up next we have uh joy case um the principal partner at Lava Trust, so it's lavatrust.com. Uh, Joy serves as an author, speaker, advisor in the blockchain space. Uh, her background is rooted in education, both public and private, real estate sectors. Um, prior to her focus on media and innovation technologies, Joy uh, has over 15 years of experience as an educational leader in public schools and has taught uh, K-12. She received her master's of education from University of British Columbia in 2002 and a real estate license from Sauter School of Business in 2005. Her expertise includes administration, management of schools, accreditation, and licensing. Um, and um, a lot more here. <laughs> okay. Uh, as, a real, as a real estate uh, consultant, educator, and investment advisor since 2005, she's worked with clients across Canada, um, has experience with Canadian and U.S. real estate transactions, commercial development, residential real estate, buying and selling in, of private schools. And at present, she's helping realtors and clients accept Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies for the purchase of um, real property. And um, last but not least, she's combining her knowledge, experience, and enthusiasm of blockchain technologies. She vets companies and sits on the board of advisors of blockchain companies to support the development of blockchain-based companies that are good for people and the planet. So amazing. <laughs> uh, and how are you? Hi, everybody. Great to be here. Thank you so much, Nathan. You're I welcome. Really hope you feel better soon. You know, the last part is the key for me. You know, what is good for people and what is good for the planet? And so I hope that conversations like we're having this evening can keep happening with the wonderful people that uh, we've had the opportunity to to listen to here. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about um, the metaverse. Well, I believe Web3 is here and Facebook is only one in a long line of companies that are seeing the potential in the metaverse and moving in that direction. If businesses and nonprofits are going to remain competitive in the coming decades, they must be willing to enter the metaverse. The metaverse isn't just about VR, it's about the creation of a digital world where, where we, the people, are in full control, a place where we can become anyone or anything we want to be. The metaverse is infinite opportunity. Consider what's already being done in the space by visionaries and entrepreneurs. Until today, the best examples of what the metaverse might look like have been massive 
multiplayer online games like World of Warcraft, Second Life, or Fortnite. Unfortunately, this led many people to believe that the metaverse will be liter literally not more than a video game. Well, while there are incredible opportunities within the future of the metaverse for people interested in recreation, that's the only tip of the iceberg. For example, the metaverse opens up educational opportunities that would have been impossible just a few years ago. Imagine a virtual campus where you can attend classes, talk to professors and fellow students, and engage in hands-on learning opportunities. With tomorrow's XR tech, this would be possible for anyone in the world as long as they have a stable, high-speed internet connection and the right hardware. The metaverse will allow people all around the world, including those in developing countries, to attend the most prestigious, intellectually rigorous schools around the world, and they won't have to leave their hometowns to do it. Along with upending the academy's status quo, the metaverse will forever change the way we work. Virtual spaces will give us all the benefits of the office without the commute. This won't just save you hours of drive time though. This can make a significant impact on our world's environmental problems. And even if you work alone, the metaverse will allow you to work in ways you have never imagined. You could create the perfect workspace within the metaverse, tailored completely to your preferences, from the color of the walls to the ambient noises around you. And when you're ready to be productive, just simply step into that digital space, an online office designed to eliminate distractions and keep you focused on the tasks at hand. No matter what your job, the metaverse will offer a better, more streamlined and productive way to get it done. Metaverse will also change the way we shop, offering us unlimited number of exciting consumer choices. Blockchain tech is already playing a major role in the development of the metaverse. Blockchain technology opens the door for incredible innovations like smart contracts that automatically pay artists a commission on every future sale of their artwork or fraud proof notary services, or the proliferation of digital goods like NFTs. And speaking of NFTs, the past year has seen a veritable explosion of interest in them. Recent research note by Morgan Stanley predicts that the luxury NFT market could reach as high as 56 billion by 2030. If that sounds extreme to you, consider Dolce & Gabbana's sale of nine NFTs this past October. Together, they netted over five and a half million. And as more digital spaces pop up, the desire for digital products will only increase. It's been a Wild West digital renaissance. NFT artists and photographers and groups on Facebook have thousands of keen artists finally seeing a pathway to monetize their craft. Just like any tool or fad, however, it boils down to marketing and perceived value. Lots of starving artists are still hungry. In Evo World, we host live NFT auctions that will benefit both the artist and the nonprofits we support. Baked in royalties, a win-win. If millions of dollars are already spent on video games, costumes, and digital trading cards, what do you think will happen when we spend most of our waking hours in digital spaces? Won't we want the same kind of products for our avatars that we use in the real world? And won't we spend just as much time decorating our online homes as we do our real ones? That is why the market for NFTs is going to explode over the next decade and a half. And as we enter the metaverse, we'll begin to treat our online personas and spaces in the same way we treat our real ones. Imagine the possibilities. You go to your local furniture store and pick out a new couch. When it's delivered, you get the physical couch with the QR code that allows you to redeem a digital twin for your online home. It's not unreasonable to think that much of what we purchase in the real world could come with a way to use it in the metaverse too. But digital twins aren't just a cool way to add value to the purchase of physical products. Dozens of companies are already creating digital twins, computer-generated models of real-world products, vehicles, and buildings. These digital twins allow engineers and others to create fully functional prototypes without spending millions on materials. Plus, digital twins can be used to evaluate a product under various real-world conditions. And once we fully entered the metaverse, they'll make it even easier for inventors and engineers to collaborate on products, both digital and physical. But this isn't just a matter of convenience. Jensen Huang, CEO of NVIDIA, believes that corporations will save hundreds of billions of dollars as they use the metaverse to simulate their processes with digital twins and related technologies. This makes the metaverse an unbelievable investment. The amount of money required for companies to begin utilizing this tech is minuscule compared to what they'll be able to save. And the futurists and innovators already know this. The metaverse market size reached 44.69 billion in 2020. Experts are predicting it'll grow at 44.8% CAGR through 2027, putting it at nearly 600 billion by the end of that year. And if COVID fears continue to keep people in their homes, the growth rate 
will be higher. That said, we should really pay attention to concerns and fears. Louis Rosenberg, one of the fathers of AR, recently penned an article where he shared, he writes, AR will make us even more dependent on the insidious layers of tech that mediate our lives and the power brokers that control these layers. This will leave us increasingly susceptible to manipulations and distortions by those who can afford to pull the strings. He goes on to note how the metaverse could leave people with a warped view of reality as they tailor their world for their own preferences. And if you think Facebook ads are bad, wait till every billboard you pass has an advertisement of your most recent Google search. Just as the metaverse will exponentially increase the benefits of social media, it will also multiply the drawbacks unless steps are taken to prevent it. The metaverse will only accelerate the polarization and the fake news that's been allowed to flourish under Facebook and other similar platforms. But that doesn't have to be the future of the metaverse. We simply need to ground it in some core principles, transparency, decentralization. If we're going to guard against uh, power brokers that Louis Rosenberg warned us, we cannot put the creation and maintenance of the metaverse into the hands of single person or business. It must be built using open source approach uh, to keep unwanted corporate hands from collecting our data and using it for their own purposes. And it needs to be powered by blockchain technology. So it enjoys the transparency, decentralization and security that blockchain entails. Well, Web 3.0 evolves GameFi and DeFi, and now what's called SocialFi. Over 5 billion people on the planet use social media. That's around two thirds of the world's entire population. Unfortunately, social media doesn't exist for those people, even if they benefit from it. The current model makes users the product. Large and small businesses alike pay social media companies like Meta and Twitter for detailed data about their users so they can target them in ads. This is why many futurists are looking to SocialFi as the future of social media. Social file will com combine same DeFi and blockchain elements into our social media platforms. This will empower brands and content creators and influencers to gain greater control over their monetization efforts. With SocialFi, influencers will no longer be tied to those big social media platforms. They'll be able to create communities with shared interests on their own terms, and they'll receive greater financial benefits for the content that they do create. And SocialFi will give consumers the ability to connect with others who share their interests and passions. But unlike many of the current platforms, SocialFi will break up the monopoly that the largest influencers have. Users will be able to support their favorite content creators even more directly. And this will give a louder voice to a smaller content creators and brands, giving more opportunities for competition and growth. There are several tokens in SocialFi, including Mask, Bitcoin, and Whale. They've seen incredible gains in the recent months, such as 100% plus. And when compared to the crypto market at large, SocialFi represents only a small fraction of all the tokens, but that is poised to change. Web3 makes it all possible. Built on some of today's biggest values and concerns, including greater personal data sovereignty and freedom of expression, Web3 will offer us more transparent, secure, and personalized online experiences. As more influencers migrate to SocialFi like Web Presence, they'll discover the power of Web3, and those con content creators and influencers will lead their audiences there, allowing Web3 to develop and to flourish. Uh, once the basic Web3 infrastructure is in place, nothing will be able to stop the revolution to social media that is coming. And that's the promise of SocialFi. Eva World will be poised to unite and showcase the best in DeFi, GameFi, and SocialFi by aggregating networks and facilitating or encouraging at least interoperability. Garrison Breckenridge wrote a great article lately on Medium. He said the metaverse is a limited view of the future. Let's not let our material conditions degrade in the physical world in the pursuit of experiences and riches in the virtual. Let's build systems of value that traverse both. One forerunner in building this new techno social system is a company called Materium. Alongside Eva World's ideals, they believe in a hybrid future where property and value transcend the usual constraints of either the digital or the physical. They're experimenting with a new form of omniversal property rights with real world asset NFT, a method of bringing physical goods into the rapidly growing crypto economy. Building this bridge will not only increase the value and utility of crypto, but it will also allow for a more decentralized and secure approach to physical commerce, which is under constant threat of monopolization and systemic vulnerability. Crypto's total market cap exceeds $2 trillion. Over $80 billion is locked in de decentralized finance, and people are buying pixelated avatars for millions of dollars. All this 
of value while providing little to none in the way of actual social impact. We should use these incredible tools to improve our material conditions. Real world asset NFTs expand the scope and utility of crypto. Real world asset is a method of using legal and software engineering to tokenize physical property so it can be traded, collateralized, governed, and owned using the same global medium of transfer value that powers the multi trillion dollar crypto economy. These tokens expand on the functionality of NFTs, gaining popularity in the creative industries by granting the bearer the right to take the physical custody of the underlying object. Simple idea, vast opportunities. Real world asset NFTs are um, a digital design space that we've only begun to explore. Real world asset NFTs can bridge the virtual economy and the physical world. It's time to balance the digital and the physical and onboard the hundreds of trillions of physical assets throughout the world. NFTs can facilitate the transfer of clearly defined property rights. This can be done today. I imagine a new type of NASDAQ for fractional ownership of hard asset NFTs for real property. The combination of blockchain and NFT can bring the programmability of smart contracts and the provenance of immutable ledger transactions for goods and services in the physical world, eliminate fraud, secure trust, and allocate social, financial, and intellectual capital to the governance and maintenance of shared resources. We now have the ability to build bi-directional links between physical objects and their digital counterparts using maps and NFTs, opening up digital commerce. The technology blurs the distinction between digital and physical value between objects in the metaverse and objects in the material world. Blockchain NFTs combined with legal engineering can create and enforce property rights across the metaverse and real world simultaneously. We need a platform like Eva World offering the best of the metaverse without the dangers of corporate spying or data sales. A democratic metaverse built on blockchain safe and secure. But that's only part of the beauty of the metaverse. It has the potential to be so much more. Imagine a digital space where the world's greatest problems can finally be solved. By offering thought leaders and futurists and entrepreneurs a place to gather and collaborate, the metaverse can be a catalyst for transforming the world by meeting the problems represented by United Nations Sustainable Development Goals head on. The tech is only as grand as the underlying vision for abundant human futures. Until AI programs are smart contracts, we get to choose our greater purpose. Thank you so much, Nathan than for the opportunity to speak and for all yes. the innovation that Ubiquity brings yeah. to the real estate industry. Oh, thank you. Absolutely. And thank you for everything that you're doing, um, you know, through Lava Trust. And I, I hear so many great stories from uh, Christina, who's part of your team, and just the innovations that are happening. And, um, you know, one, one thing that uh, Wes brought up was uh, the conversation that we had, uh, I, you know, it was the Q2 of uh of this year still it's this year uh in terms of uh your attorney and him discussing real estate in the metaverse so things are kind of coming full circle he said it's pretty cool yeah yes. that's awesome um does anyone have uh, questions for for joy um or any um comments or any uh feedback we uh i wanted to give you you know your amount of time for your speech um we can bring other people on the chat as well. If anyone wants to come on the video chat, just to have a conversation. Wes, do you want to come on video? <laughs> it's been a while. I'd love Not to, to see anyone Wes. on the spot. Yeah. Um, I just, if I may, I just want to let you know that Eva yes. World is a is a common space for us all to meet and to to talk together about these topics. So I just wanted to kind of. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. The conversation starters, right? You know, that are embedded are. in what I just read to you, uh, which is my speech, because I really want us to think about when we mastermind together, right? Then we can do so much more. We can, absolutely. And I and I love the idea of, of uh, interoperable metaverses. <laughs> I kid you not, in, in probably, you know, I would say drug haze, because it wasn't drug, it wasn't medication. And uh, cough syrup. <laughs> Again, I'm sick. I'm unwell. I did have dreams of metaverses that were interoperable. That happened this week. And then, uh, you know, you guys are talking about it. So I think it's awesome. <laughs> Let's sec. see if Wes comes on here. Let's meet in metaverse. No, I, lo I love that idea. And I love that what you're, you know, what you covered. Um, if you, uh, if you'd like, uh, you can perhaps send, you know, your speech or, or some of the data to our attendees. I think they'd love that. 
For sure, I would love to do that. And and we shall meet in Eva World. It's a it's a yeah. free open meeting space for us all. So I'd love cool. if this whole group could come into the metaverse and we could sit around the board table and talk yeah. together. Absolutely, I gotta get myself a VR helmet. I know that early iterations of of them uh, got really dizzy with them, but I'm sure there's been improvements. Uh, there's a lot of PS4 games now that are coming out, and PS5 games like PlayStation games that are now uh, requiring that you have a VR helmet. Just crazy. Well, the so. beauty of Eva World is you don't need a VR uh, equipment to join. Oh, good. It's just That's you good. and your avatar, and uh, and it's really good for business to business activities. Oh, cool. Looking forward to it. Yeah, because I remember I remember using um, Second Life way back in the day in 2005, 2006, and that was fun. And, um, but it's cool. I think, I think there's more mass adoption, and you know, people want to give. Um, they want to be negative about Facebook, aka Meta, but they are pushing a lot of. Uh, well, I don't know, centralized boundaries and stuff. You know, they had their coin they were going to launch. So I, I think that it's always good when large organizations are, are pushing uh, some of the things that we're working on as well. It gets mass adoption. So, oh, uh, Carson has a question. Uh, <laughs> let's see here. Interoperability in the metaverse just magnifies the possibilities. Gregory, Gregory Knight. Gregory Knight, excuse me. So let's, uh, that's cool. Oh, Eva World. <laughs> Yosin. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, well, Wes is on here. He's just muted right now. I'm here. Oh, hey, man. Hello, Howdy. Man. Yeah, you know what's you know what's funny is um I, I was I I know meta metaverses have existed for a long time. I think I mentioned before. Um my daughter plays Roblox quite a bit. That's that's Ooh. a metaverse in and of itself. And a lot of these gaming gaming platforms, they're their own metaverse. Like GTA, I play GTA. It's fun, and that's a metaverse. <clears throat> but I I wanted to experience VR, so I bought an Oculus for I got an Oculus for Christmas, and um, that's a, that is amazing technology. You, it's 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 still not as good as it could be, and I it, what it will eventually be, but it's pretty amazing now. Like I wished I had this when I was a kid. Like, cause I, I, this is where I wanted it to be. And I, I, I got a, I, I was playing a ping pong game in there and the physics are freaking amazing. It's like you have the ping pong table right in your, and it has a room that you play in as a cool. ping pong table and you play against other people. And I, I kid you not, it's, it's, a, it's just like you're there playing in real life. Oh. Pretty <laughs> and, I, and, and, and I just, I can imagine doing business in there. And when you were talking about, when you gave your presentation, Joy, about how you, you know, you can buy your, um, uh, you know, you, you're, you're, you have your digital twin of the actual product in a metaverse. And then you have, uh, you know, the real product. I, I can imagine people going to like, say, for example, you're, you're, you're in the metaverse and you're, you know, doing whatever it is you do, interacting, engaging with people, um, buying virtual products, like, like a virtual pizza, for example, you buy it in the metaverse and then having it arrive at your door. You know, and have it delivered. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, and there's so many opportunities. I think that uh, to for people to make money in this metaverse, even buying digital land, like people are likening it to, you know, buying a domain name, right? So yeah. people bought domain names, and now they're, you know, you know, you, you name your price. But same with virtual real estate. I think that's a, a huge market. And if you're a real estate agent, I think it's perfect to understand this and get into it because ultimately they're they're going there's going to be a, a connection between real world properties and metaverse properties like like the ones in super world that are digital versions of of the real world and i think there's going to be opportunities there with DeFi integration and if you're a real estate agent i think it's smart to understand this technology and you know to to get in now while you well, you know while the getting's good really like similar to how the early adopters of the internet were in back in the 90s i wish i would have you know, jumped on that bandwagon when it was there, but it is what it is. And I jumped, I became an early adopter of crypto and, and that's where I'm at. And, yeah. It's, it's awesome, man. It's definitely awesome. Well, you can get uh, dot, uh, you can get dot ETH top level domains now <laughs> that are supposedly decentralized. I, I'm not sure how that all works. I haven't tried. Well, buy virtual real estate, go in and buy metaverse properties in, in Decentraland, Superworld, and Upland, all these other metaverses that you can, because, you know, ultimately these things are going to, 
you know, yep. maintain their value and go up in value, and people are going to be building on them and creating. Oh, you know, sure. Most definitely. Metaverses. That's yeah, absolutely. Um, is Gerard here? Let's see here. I think he's. It says he's online here. I mean, let me try. Yeah. Uh, oh, here. you're here. Okay, cool. All right. Well, great job, Joy. Um, that was fantastic. Um, uh, please send your your speech uh, to. Everyone here, if you have it uh, uploaded as a PDF or if you want to email to people, that's fine as well. Uh, send your contact I'll info. I'll okay. email. Hey. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great um, evening and uh, happy new year. Thanks, you too. Okay, take care. Bye bye. Hey, Mr. <laughs> so, you know, I don't have your updated bio, so why don't I give you the floor and we'll uh, have you talk and for 20 minutes. Sure. Well, so let me give you my, my quick uh, updated bio in terms of things that's relevant. So in uh, 2017, I had a little meetup in the Washington, D.C. area, and uh, uh, it, it sort of expanded from there. <clears throat> so today we have about, uh, it, it's called, a, it was called Government Blockchain Professionals. It, it then morphed into the Government Blockchain Association. And today we have about 120 chapters around the world um, <clears throat> with about 50 different working groups. So um, you know, I can tell you that I like to take long walks on the beach and a bunch of other stuff about me, but uh, uh, that that's pretty much my claim to fame. So is that <clears throat> uh, ho hopefully that that's enough. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Do, do, do. I just saw the settings. Sounds here. good. Go. <clears throat> All right, and so all right, so you guys can see my screen now. Hopefully, yes. Can you see my screen? <clears throat> Is that a yes, no? Can you guys still hear me? Yep, yep, absolutely. I'm, I'm, just, I'm oh, mute right now. Oh. I can see it. Okay, so so here's basically what, what I want to do. I figure everyone, after all of the stuff that we've been learning for the last couple hours, everyone uh, on this call is either looking to advance, looking for resources to move forward, or they, uh, they are a resource. They've got capabilities that they want to share with other people. So what I'd like to do over the next, you know, 10, 15, <clears throat> 20 minutes is um, share with you basically how you can share your resources or find resources uh, on, on a platform. So we're the Government Blockchain Association, and uh, and so that that's what I'd like to share with you. Let me give you the, the bottom line up front. <clears throat> so we do work with governments all over the world at the local, state, national, and international level. And the one thing that that I know for sure is that governments are ready for blockchain, right? They know that it's coming. So that, well, <clears throat> I would say they're ready to get ready. And the big, the big driver in the technology space is the cryptocurrency. So cryptocurrency, the excitement about <clears throat> all this cryptocurrency is really driving uh, the technology, much like when the internet was, was, um, was growing, uh, it was really email, right? Everybody wanted an email address. To get an email address, you need an ISP. Once you had an ISP, you could get to a web page and then do online banking and then you know, meet the man or woman of your dreams, <clears throat> get married, pay your taxes, and I guess uh, register for a grave, right? So, but it was really email that drove the internet. It's cryptocurrency that's really driving blockchain. <clears throat> and the impact that we're really seeing it from a government perspective is in local systems. It's very, very hard to change large national systems where we're seeing <clears throat> a lot of early adoption and people trying things out are, are really at the city and local level. So you're, you're hearing about places like, you know, Miami and Wyoming and Texas and a lot of other places uh, trying things, Utah County. Um, so if we want to see where blockchain is really growing the fastest, it's really at the, at the local systems. <clears throat> and the use cases that we're seeing really, you know, uh, from, a, uh, from a real estate and titling perspective, when you're dealing with real estate and titling, you're generally dealing with local governments. So the use cases that we're really seeing is uh, emergency management, environmental management, law enforcement, property registrations, revenue, taxes, fees, online gaming, uh, a lot of things that are <clears throat> dealing with um, financial and regulated industries, uh, utilities, and, <clears throat> and clearly voting in elections. So <clears throat> we're, we're seeing a real big pickup in these areas. Uh, and that's where I think it's important for us to, to prepare for the future and land titling, you know, dealing with... Um, with local commissioners and, and stuff like that. that. That's really where I think the seeds of the major blockchain innovation uh, for the public sector is coming. So where can I learn more? Where can I, I find out more about this? So I'd like to tell you about um, uh, our website as a resource. It's the Government Blockchain Association or, or GBAglobal.org. 
Uh, <clears throat> we do have a big conference coming up in January 27th and 28th at the National Press Club. I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Um, on our website, we have all kinds of stuff. So the, the big, blue bo bo big blue box you see on the top right, um, that's, a, that's a, a report called The Impact of Cryptocurrency Adoption on Governments. It's a 138-page report put together by the Finance Minister of Croatia, data scientists in Australia and Germany, and folks at Georgetown University, and um, folks from the FDIC. It, it, it's a really well-researched report. Um, the cryptocurrency maturity profile is a, is a, some metrics that we're putting together. Uh, down on the bottom right, you can see access to mailing lists, uh, podcasts, YouTube channels, <clears throat> our GBA LinkedIn page. Our, somebody did an audit, uh, our outreach with regards to LinkedIn. If you look at our leadership, I think it's 450,000. So <clears throat> it's a really powerful tool. So all, all kinds of stuff. In terms of geographically where we're located, like I said, GBA has uh, chapters in about 120 um, uh, cities around the world. What's important to understand about, <clears throat> about these is these are local communities. And so, and uh, these local chapters, people get together to connect, communicate, and collaborate. And this is where the public sector and the private sector come together. So if you want to be able to reach out to local public sector officials, <clears throat> these the chapters are a great uh, mechanism to, to get to, uh, to local chapters. <clears throat> and so I started the first uh, chapter in the DC area. Um, and I wanted to get in a blockchain. My, my son had bought a couple of dollars worth of, worth of Bitcoin. And when he sold me, he paid for a car, a motorcycle, his college tuition and living expenses. And it kind of got my attention. So, um, so I said, well, <clears throat> apparently blockchain is the secret sauce. <coughs> um, so we, we held a meeting, uh, a, a meetup. And I figured, well, I don't know anything about this, but I can Google it for an hour. And I can research different subjects each month. And we'll just get people together. And, and hopefully we'll figure out some doors to open. And as we started doing it, you know, people started letting us know how much they, they really liked it. And, and DC gets a lot of visitors from out of town. So uh, people would show up from Denver, from Atlanta, from New York, and they'd say, hey, I really like what you're doing here. Could I duplicate this in my own city? Would you share your slides? And I said, sure. <clears throat> but we got to a point I just couldn't do enough Googling to, to satisfy that many chapters. <clears throat> so we created these things called working groups. And uh, I'm going to... This is a, essentially a, a list of, <coughs> but I want to take you to the actual page. So <clears throat> these working groups, uh, we have them on a variety of different top topics, right? Artificial intelligence, acquisition management, asset management, aviation, big data, budgeting, accounting, transparency, campaign and fundraising, contract management, right? <clears throat> Cybersecurity, economic analysis, education, elections, emergency management, energy. So <clears throat> I'm not going to re read all of them. I'll just sort of scroll through. But initially, these working groups were put together to create content that could go out to the different uh, chapters. And we invited anybody in government to join for free. And what started happening was um, people, <clears throat> people who um, in the, in the uh, public sector, they, they would come and they'd say, here's the problems we're trying to solve. And the, uh, and the private sector folks would say, here's our solution. Here's our white paper. Here's our demo. Right. And what started happening was these became places, we've got a land title working group, these became places where people could connect, communicate, and collaborate. So, <clears throat> the, um, and, and then what ended up happening is they essentially became places where people could, you know, expand their business, uh, meet other people, develop strategic relationships, and, uh, and, and like that. <clears throat> So GBA has uh, has members that work in about 500 different government organizations around the world uh, at the local, state, national, and international level. So if you want to reach out and connect to people, um, the, this essentially is just a, it's not a complete list. It's, a, it's only a partial list of the 500 different um, uh, entities, you know, places where, where GBA members work. And we don't really necessarily shoot for the top of the organizations. We generally shoot for the middle. Because the people at the top of these uh, government organizations, they listen to people in the middle, and the people in the middle can actually get stuff done. So what we've done is we've created a giant fabric of, of people and technology. I'll, I'll talk to you about the technology a little bit, um, where people can connect, communicate, and collaborate. <clears throat> so we're just really creating a, a giant web. There, there, there's a lot more here. I'm not, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Uh, there'll be a... Um, a QR code on the last page here so you can download the presentation, which will include all the hyperlinks. <coughs> um, 
so it, if you're looking for another organization, one of the things that we find is that a lot of uh, folks are looking for a, a company with blockchain solutions. So we've got this organizational directory. Now, if you're not in the organizational directory and you want to be found, well, you should get listed because uh, this has become a site where folks in government from around the world uh, you know, go to to find resources, both people, organizations, technologies. And so you can search if you're looking for a, a, a particular um, <clears throat> type of blockchain uh, company or service provider, you essentially can search by, by category. So there, there's, there's a bunch of them there. And I'm going fairly quick because there's, there's no way we can cover the uh, – all of GBA in 15 minutes. It's it's uh, it's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. But one of the things that's um that people are looking for is uh, <clears throat> again if you're a, if you're a, a person and you want to be found. So this is this is a searchable database of GBA members that have opted into the into the database, and um <clears throat> and so you can search by 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 technology by by use case by cryptocurrency. A lot of event planners you use this site to find speakers. And a lot of projects use it for um, um, a lot of uh, projects use it for uh, um, uh, for, for their, their projects. But if I want to search for uh, somebody in the real estate space, <clears throat> or or if you want to be listed here, right, or or you're looking for folks, there's uh, 113 people in GBA that have expertise in um, in, in real estate. So this is just a way that <clears throat> that you can find you can find folks. If uh, just to give you an example of, of uh, let's see. So if I search for myself, now there's Mark Stewart. Mark Stewart is the vice mayor of, I want to say somewhere in Arizona or something like that. They just implemented the voting. <clears throat> oh, yeah. oh, there's my name. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, I should have I should have clicked on you. That's uh, okay. Uh, when you, I got enough you, attention tonight. <laughs> So when you when you click on somebody, you can see their activity wall. So again, it's to, it's intended to help people connect, communicate, and collaborate. You'll hear me say that a lot. You can click on the profile uh, of somebody and and uh, find out about their, their their background, their capabilities, their LinkedIn profile, stuff like that. It, uh, there's friends like uh, other social medias. Uh, if you want to see what groups I'm in, so one of the reasons why we set up all these different groups is we realize, you know, if I'm <clears throat> If I'm in a uh, uh, in a Washington D.C. chapter meeting and somebody and I and I hear somebody say, "Oh, my boss is looking for a voting solution," I can say, "Oh, well, I'm I'm also in the voting working group. We're working with a company out of uh, Boston called Votes. Uh, here's their contact information." And so, by putting people in the, in a whole group of different concentric and overlapping circles, some are geographically based, some are domain based, we create a giant decentralized um, database of blockchain expertise and, and information. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, 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 not to cut you off, uh, Dan O'Connell was asking, does GBA have a Montana chapter? Um, I'll have to check. I um, yeah, let, let me run through the presentation and then and then I'll check. Okay, sure. Um, I, okay, he'll check I for you. I think the answer. <clears throat> I think the answer is no, but we'll we'll go through that and check. Okay, and the, and the roles of the the chapter leaders are really to um, the roles of the chapter leader are really to uh, to create the kind of environment where with this capital collaboration the stuff you guys were talking earlier about you know i don't think you use this exact term but but it's what, what i got you know the rising tide lifting all ships and and the environment that's really collaborative and the pie is, is big enough for everybody yeah that's really the, that's really the um the environment the culture that we you know with the, the together we can all achieve more but this connecting with colleagues is is great on the gba website under resources there's a ton of resources. Again, I, I wish I could go into all of it tonight. There's, there's over eight gigs of member uploaded content. And just for as an example, if you search for the word title, uh, you'll find 419 posts uh, that, that talk about wow. title. <laughs> Some stuff from cool. Ubiquity on there too. That's awesome. Yeah. Now listen, um, one of the things I noticed is we, we you, you posted it on the blog, but you didn't post it as an event. So next time we do an event, make sure you post it on the calendar. Okay. <laughs> I will, I will. Yeah. yeah, because what what we do is we've got a we've got somebody that uh, uh, every week he he goes through the calendar and he takes the events on the calendar and he posts them on on uh, a whole bunch of different meetups and Eventbrite and stuff like that. So, uh, cool. we, you know, our, in fact, I, I'll take a little 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 side tour for our organizational members <clears throat> and um, 
we want to set up two calls. The first call is to get information about your company, your product, your services up on our site, right? Your people get you connected to all the right groups. The second call is a campaign call. And what we want to do that is get, a, get an understanding of your product, your services, your go-to-market strategy, your messaging, your target audience, and your timing, right? And <clears throat> from that, we design a campaign. And it might be to have you speak on our podcast. It might be to have you speak at an event, a press release, a YouTube channel. Uh, whatever, we, we design a campaign to fit your business goals and objectives. And then when you give us a green light, we push a button, we automate it. And, um, and you know, our, again, our, our goal is to help folks in this, in this space uh, achieve their business goals and objectives. We have a massive library of blockchain videos. Um, so if you go to the YouTube channel and just look up Government Blockchain Association, you'll find, uh, you know, blockchain and international trade, block, central banks, blockchain and crypto, blockchain banking and crypto. Uh, pharmaceutical standards for hemp and cannabis. Um, Brian Talebi is uh, is an incredible guy. He he grew up as a goat herder in Iran, became a NASA quantum scientist, and now uh, travels around the world helping people uh, become educated at five to seven times their normal rate and uh, and just doing all kinds of stuff for the world. We had Don Tapscott uh, at one of our events. Uh, my favorite video on here, if you haven't checked it out, there's a guy by the name of Dr. Bob Brown. And uh, Dr. Brown was a close personal friend and advisor of Martin Luther King. He was a special assistant to uh, Richard Nixon, helped him get the largest percentage of black votes of any uh, Republican in history. He, he, he uh, escorted Kennedy's body to, uh, to the gravesite. He sat in President Botha's office and ordered him to free Nelson Mandela from prison. He, he started 500 libraries in Africa he named the first mayor of Washington, D.C. and the first city council. He started the Minority Business Development Agency. He, he was responsible for hundreds of general black generals entering the, uh, that, those ranks for the first time in history and thousands of minority businesses to get GSA contracts. He was won seven Lifetime Achievement Awards, 14 honorary PhDs. And here's, here's the creme de la creme. He was born the great grandson of a slave that was sold to the railroad, and he became chairman of the board of that same railroad. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, so he was a keynote speaker for uh, our event, Blockchain and Liberty for All. <clears throat> and he said to me, he said, Gerard, I, I don't know anything about, about blockchain. I said, Dr. Brown, I was like, we got a ton of people that know about blockchain, but you're a man that had an impact on the world and you overcame great adversity. You, you took hits from the right, from the left, from the whites, from the blacks yet you persevered <clears throat> to, to make a positive change. And our leaders are gonna face similar challenges, not the same topics, but similar challenges, and they need to be inspired by your story. And that, that really is sort of indicative of the leadership qualities uh, in, <clears throat> of the folks in our organization. We've got a whole bunch of special projects. I told them, um, we, we just we're in the process of launching a federal credit union. It's called Maven Federal Credit Union. There's a lot of things that's really powerful about this, but here's the most crazy thing. We are actually a trailblazer working with the National Credit Union Administration to come up with a framework <clears throat> for helping blockchain systems develop, uh, you know, be organized under this act. And when you are, you're outside of the jurisdiction of the SEC. So you don't have to worry about securities violations. <clears throat> you still have to deal with the AML KYC. You're still regulated, but, uh, but not under the heavy hand of the SEC. We've got a couple blockchain based elections projects where we're working uh, to help edu educate uh, local election officials to help them understand that um, remote electronic voting is <clears throat> is and can be secured uh, because we've got to crack that nut before blockchain voting has, has a chance. And we're working with the Election Advisory Commission to provide supplemental data to their to their standards right now so that blockchain based election equipment could become certified. And once they're certified, they can be purchased by um, uh, by municipalities. We're building out something called the blockchain maturity model. Um, right now, if if uh, if somebody wants to buy a blockchain solution in the federal government or, or even local or state government, um, they don't have the expertise, the knowledge, or the or the framework to be able to assess a good blockchain from a bad blockchain. So they're always going to default to IBM, right, or Deloitte or some other uh, company that that's got um, that's got a track record. And that means these smaller, innovative, more agile companies essentially don't have a chance um, at the government level. So the blockchain maturity model is a framework to help uh, elect uh, to help um, acquisition officials assess a blockchain in terms of immutability, ubiquity, <coughs> uh, reliability, uh, privacy, things like that. 
and it's got five layers. It's, uh, so the, the first one is, are you mature enough to, uh, to, to uh, warrant uh, research and development funding? The second one is, are you mature enough to deploy as a proof of concept? The third is, are you mature enough to deploy uh, in a production environment? The fourth is, are you mature enough to go into a enterprise uh, environment? And the last is, are you mature enough to to go global? <clears throat> so that's it. We're, we're currently piloting with with four or five different blockchains right now. One of them is the United Nations blockchain. Um, and interestingly enough, <clears throat> they're, they're, they're not doing overly well because they have 10 nodes and this, those 10 nodes are all on uh, UN servers controlled by a single admin. So they're, they're not, they're not hey, sure. Who told to... me this? It's like, I don't think you understand blockchain, guys. Exactly. <laughs> that's, what you're, that's what we're here for, right? But, you know, it, it's, really, um, it, it, it's really powerful <laughs> because you. in addition to being an assessment model, it's also a roadmap. So it's been really great. Yeah. Um, GBA is developing a directory, so we're taking our members' products and services, putting it on a directory, and then we can then go market that directory to governments around the world. Uh, one of the first products on there is a penetration testing that uses uh, AI and, and blockchain. Um, we're doing a whole bunch of stuff with regulated industries, including gaming and cannabis, uh, creating regulator dashboards, things like that. We've got uh, several different token projects. One of the um, ones that I'm really excited about is this community token, where we're looking at taking tokens from GBA member companies, consolidating that into a community token, and then rewarding GBA members that that create value <clears throat> to the ecosystem with these community tokens. And that way we're tying the we're tying the uh, the welfare of the members with the welfare of the member companies, creating an environment where they can all support each other and um, continue to grow. So we have events. We do events literally every week. Um, one of my favorite events is the State of Crypto. We do it <clears throat> uh, at the tail end of every month. We generally cap that at about 200 people. Um, our events tend to be very open, a lot of dialogue um, back and forth, but um, uh, yeah. most of these things are, are open. Our next big event is uh, the Future of Money Governance the Law uh, at the National Press Club. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> this, is, uh, this is fun. So we're going to have... Bitcoin Magazine, Fox Communications, we'll have folks there from the European Commission, European Parliament, World Bank, UN, uh, United Arab, Union of Arab Banks, all kinds of different national organizations, England, El Salvador, Estonia, wow. Brazil, um, Geneva. So it's a whole bunch, Chile, Slovenia, and then a whole bunch of US uh, uh, departments and agencies. We'll have a whole bunch of state and local folks. One of the things that's really exciting about this is <clears throat> one of the guys who's coming is the guy who wrote the Liechtenstein Blockchain Act. So they've created a national framework for blockchain. And now they, it's, it's been a, a law for a year. And so they're going to come and share their experiences in Liechtenstein with implementing a national blockchain uh, infrastructure. <clears throat> um, they're going to share that with um, uh, with all of the government leaders. So that's it's going to be pretty cool. Yeah, I'd like that. I'd like to hear what Ch what Chile is doing just because they got a new government. So, yeah, that, it, I'll I'll, I'll is, bite my tongue on my thoughts on that, but I just think it's interesting because I lived there for a year, and I uh, our 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 client our global client account manager, senior global client account manager, uh, is uh, is is living there. He's actually uh, from Venezuela. So well, come, right? by all means, come, yeah. come and, and, and we're doing another similar, smaller event at Fort Lauderdale. This one is going to be focused cool. on blockchain and cryptocurrency for state and local. Uh, we're, we are currently looking cool. for speakers for this event, but um, uh, property, type, property titling and other local uh, services is, is essentially what we're looking for. So, You know, I could put you in touch with David Mundrus. Actually, he was a, a, a colleague of mine when I ran a Blockchain Factory way back in 2014. 2015 it was a precursor to ubiquity um if you want to send me a reminder uh david mundras actually lives in uh pompano beach just outside of fort yeah. lauderdale and i actually that I, I lived there too for for almost yeah, a year yeah the process Paul, is really easy i'll shoot you a link you just uh, volunteer to speak and i uh, and cool. love to talk to him yeah he he's knows lots of blockchain you. tech he's into mining he's an early adopter too so really fun guy if you're interested in this presentation, it's got my contact information on the cover page. Just snap a picture of this QR code, and yep. uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I went so fast. I just uh, there, there's a lot of ground to cover, and I know. I know the, the it's great. No, it's fantastic. Well, I think on that note, uh, just say this. Um, 
Okay, I guess there were some other questions, but I guess you could probably uh, answer them on here in terms of security, stuff like that. In terms of the Memphis chapter, um, you know, you should get in touch with Carson and uh, everyone else here on the chat. But everybody, it was a pleasure. Um, I'm supposed to say some final thoughts. I'd say this. Uh, don't stay safe. Live your life. Take risks. You know, probably with COVID, you know, stay safe. But I hate that saying, stay safe. Take risks leap before you know like like leap leap without looking um innovate be persistent be uh have perseverance be kind to each other and uh you know reflect back in 2021 your successes and your failures learn from it and uh keep pushing forward and so uh, other than that final thoughts being check out ubiquity.io smartescrow.us and everyone keep in touch we're a community here uh we all we're all here to support one another and, um, you know, rising tides lift all boats, John F. Kennedy. So on that note, thank you so much for, uh, for, for tuning in and, uh, Coba won't kill you. Die with your boots on. Listen to Nathan. Yeah. And actually Carson, a, a person who's also suffering from this COVID stuff, uh, just, you know, we'll get through it. We have immune systems and, uh, lots of rest is important. So thank you, Joy. Thank you for everybody for tuning in. You guys are awesome. When I hit when I hit end broadcast, probably within about five minutes, it'll be available live. So I'll share it on social media. So thanks again, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, we'll have another one next quarter. And uh, doot, doodaloo, doot, doot, doot. Bye-bye. <laughs>